a oh, very good evening everyone uh, <clears throat> a warm welcome to all of you guys a very 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 good evening to everyone i'm happy that i'm able to connect to you people after a long long time in this live session on youtube here yeah a good evening good evening bhairam good evening doctor good evening mehfooz khan good evening vikas a very very good evening to all of you chaudhary <clears throat> abdul azim yeah basit basit altaf a very good evening very good evening to all of you yes <clears throat> namaste assalam alaikum so my dear doctors first of all to begin with <clears throat> very very good evening gujja ji ha uh, ayush ji very good evening very good evening doctor sir ha uh, so now first of all to begin with my dear doctors here <clears throat> we are actually here to discuss about biochemistry here guys i am going to discuss like biochemistry in the next two hours entire biochemistry and all the high yield topics all the must know topics that you have to know before going to the exam okay but before starting with that one i'd like to tell you one thing here my dear friends yesterday in the evening we just got a very big 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 news that fmg exam has been postponed and it has been postponed to 20th june everyone knows that in the fmg world now uh, first thing <clears throat> first thing that would, that i would like to tell you people here is that uh, that now what is going to happen this is the same scenario we faculties have seen During a 2020 August exam, also. that lockdown was a year. I hope you all remember that one. You know? So in that year also the same thing happened. Like at that time also the start, uh, the exam was you know postponed a bit, like the same time here. So now I want to tell all of you one thing here. What we have seen during the August exam also 2020 also at that time also now they were like the students divided into two groups. One group of the students who were like completely relaxed. The the day the day we got the notice. that the exam has been postponed and the students were like completely relaxed oh dekha jayega we are having like two months of time right now we can do wonders in that and they started partying they got completely relaxed why because now i think you people also know till yesterday till yesterday we were in our like complete momentum the fastest momentum of preparation all that rapid revision sessions were going on we are revising all the subjects the students were revising like two or three subjects on a daily basis you know second and third revision going on and we were writing the subject wise test as well as the grand test and all suddenly what happened because of this news there will be yes they will be disturbed my dear friends even if i am at your place as a human being ha huh, there will be a slight disturbance in the mind in now what to do there is like complete 360 degree turn how to plan okay so therefore what i want to tell you is that one group of students will be like completely relaxed they'll start partying they'll be starting enjoying they'll be going to the movies you know what not they'll be watching series <laughs> so what i'm trying to tell you right now is please don't do that please don't do that okay <clears throat> my dear doctors you have got like ample time please recall those discussions when we were discussing when i was like you know going for all the regular classes throughout india the students were discussing sir time bahut kam hai it is very less time sir i did not solve the mcqs and all sir i did not do this three four subjects i am very much weak in this particular subject like pharmacology or psm or you know microbiology where we need to like you know revise multiple number of times and we have to memorize many many names and all those things now and so now it is the right time now it is the right time my dear friends please plan daily daily on a daily basis at least 2 hours you plan for solving the mcq please plan for solving the mcq and now because you have got approximately like almost 2 months of time and almost 63 64 days you have in your hand at least this first month the first month you plan to complete your difficult subjects the subjects which are difficult for you is it okay ha huh. so <clears throat> i want you to not to relax please utilize this time as a golden opportunity to clear your mc exam and go ahead in that is it okay so two hours you are going to plan for the mcq solving daily and then second thing is that you are actually going to like complete all your difficult subjects in the first month or i can say like first 15 20 days complete up with the difficult subjects whichever you felt was difficult for you it is like different for different different students might be like surgery is very much easy for me but surgery might be difficult for you similarly obs gynae might be easy for you and obs gynae might be like difficult for me so whatever difficult subjects are there for you don't get tempted by others don't take other suggestion because every person to person the subjects will be different is it okay so therefore revise all those difficult subjects solve the mcqs right now please don't get laid back don't get into that relaxed mood right now 
डोंट चेंज योर टेम्पो ठीक है ना सो सेइंग दैट सेइंग दैट माय डियर फ्रेंड्स आई विल बी अलोंग विद यू पीपल टिल योर डे ऑफ द एग्जाम टिल 20th जनवरी आई विल बी अलोंग विद यू पीपल एवरी नाउ एंड देन यू कैन ऑलवेज कनेक्ट विद मी यू आल्सो नो माय सोशल सोशल मीडिया हैंडल्स एंड ऑल दोस देयर आल्सो यू कैन कनेक्ट विद मी यस आई विल बी अलोंग विद यू पीपल आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू लीव माय स्टूडेंट इज इट ओके नाउ सेइंग दैट like a uh, saying that let us not waste our time now now let's come to the thing that we have actually gathered here for okay i'm happy to see most of my students here yes <clears throat> let's get started with the biochemistry session right now are you all ready just give me a thumbs up in the chat box if you will already hello my dear friends if you people are ready just give me a thumbs up in the chat box and let's get started with our session right now thank you thank you samshad thank you thank you sayed mehvish Thank you, thank you, Chaudhary ji. Yes, Kuldeep, everyone is ready now. Aisha, very good, Soumya, very good, Karishma, very nice. <coughs> Farhan, Anam Khan, very good. So now let's get started. Now the rule number one is that I am going to complete the entire biochemistry, like the carbohydrates, the proteins, and the lipids, and then the electron transport chain, the vitamins, enzymes, all these topics. I am going to tell you like what to study effectively. like what is the high yield thing i'll tell you what you have to study and go to the exam now the rule number 1 is that next 2 hours please promise me and promise yourself that you are not going to think about anything else in your life forget about everything in your life forget about everything in your life no distractions no social media nothing don't speak to anyone no answering of messages nothing just be with me and the rule number 2 is that just be along with me with the pen and the paper and please write down and please mark the topics that i am trying to tell you here the topics that you have to definitely learn my friends is it okay so saying these two things let's get started let's make utilize of this time here guys so ye 2 ghanta completely mere sath mein agar aap bitaoge and hopefully yes sure <coughs> with all our hard work i i will also pray to the god that whatever hard work we are doing here whatever time we are spending here maximum number of questions who should be coming from this session okay so saying this let's get started is it okay <clears throat> chalo sir thank you thank you so we are going to start with the remarkable rapid revision session here and now my dear doctors the first topic that i am going to take up here will be electron transport chain sabse pehla topic hum jo start karenge the first topic that we are going to start is <clears throat> the electron transport chain and if you, if anyone uh, remembers the recall questions from the june exam last june exam 4th june 2022 which was conducted yes in electron transport chain definitely one question will be coming in your next exam also so hello my dear friends <clears throat> in electron transport chain the first thing please take up your pen paper no distraction and write down the electron transport chain a question pakka aayega there will be one question definitely coming from here and for this i want you to learn two things here one will be the inhibitors of electron transport chain and another thing will be the uncouplers okay so my seventh sense is telling that the question will be coming from these two things in electron transport chain so it will be from inhibitors <coughs> it will be from the inhibitors of electron transport chain as well as the uncouplers so these two things you are definitely 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 going to learn okay chain is not visible so electron transport chain electron transport chain se ek question yahan pe na pakka hai I hope now you are able to see the screen, guys. Ah, uh, now it is visible. Very good. So what I was actually trying to tell you is that electron transport chain. So one question will definitely come from your next one exam. Okay, now one question will definitely come from here. And please write down there on the paper. You are going to learn yes inhibitors of electron transport chain as well as the uncouplers. So out of these two, one question will definitely. So in the last June exam also you have observed there was a question about the cyanide cyanide inhibiting like which complex. Okay. So now what you do is <clears throat> we'll come back to this question later on. Now we, what you do is please 
take a paper and on the paper start writing along with me. In electron transport chain, the point number one that you people have to remember is location. Where is electron transport chain taking place? Every medical student knows that it will be in the inner membrane of mitochondria. Electron transport chain will take place on the inner membrane of mitochondria. Fine. Inner membrane of mitochondria. And there are totally like five complexes. Complex number one, two, three, four and five. So everyone, my dear friends, start writing and start learning right now. So there will be like complex number one. And complex number one will be known as NADH dehydrogenase. Is it okay? And then on the other side, you write down there as complex number two. And complex number two is also known as succinate dehydrogenase. Succinate dehydrogenase. And then complex number three. Complex number three will be known as what guys? Cytochrome reductase. I want you to be like more careful here. Hello, my dear friends. While in our session, during our session, I want you to be completely with me. Don't have any distraction. The moment you're writing that word there, please revise that in your mindset. Wherever in the world you are, wherever you're sitting, sir, whether in your institute, whether in your library, whether in your room, or anywhere, anywhere, wherever you're sitting there, the moment you're writing that word, you're going to revise along with me. Guys. Okay, now. So, complex number one will be NADH, dehydrogenase. Complex number two will be succinate, dehydrogenase. Complex number three will be cytochrome, reductase. And then the complex number four will be the cytochrome oxidase. Cytochrome oxidase. And finally, the complex number 5, the complex number 5 will be the F0, F1 particle. Okay. I hope all of you have learned the names. I trust you people. Okay. I trust you people a lot. I hope you have already learned the names right now. So after learning the names, my dear friends, remember, in electron transport chain, what is going to happen is that we are going to form ATP. Fine. But from where? From NADH and FADH2. Is it okay? In our regular classes, I have told you in detail about that. Now, this is like rapid revision. So, revise along with me. NADH will actually give the hydrogens to the complex number 1. After giving the hydrogens, it is going to become NAD+. FADH2 will give the hydrogens to complex number 2. After giving the hydrogens here, if it is, it is going to become FA. Achha. So, what is the take-home point from here? Yaha se humko seekhna kya hai. NADH will give the hydrogens to complex number 1. FADH will give the hydrogens to complex number 2. Is it okay? And then, my dear friends, from complex number 1 and from the complex number 2, the hydrogens will go to complex number 3. And how it is going to complex number 3? Carrier. And the name of the carrier is coenzyme Q. And coenzyme Q is also known as ubiquinone. Please be careful with the name here. It's ubiquinone. What is that? Ubiquinone. Another word somewhere in biochemistry will be ubiquitin. Or examiner aapko aise hi option dega. And after the exam, you'll be coming back with a feedback. Sir, we were stuck with two options. Ubiquitone, ubiquinone. Ubiquinone, ubiquitin. So that I don't want in the exam. So please have full focus here now. It is ubiquinone. Ubiquinone. Okay. And then, <coughs> my dear doctors, the hydrogens will go from the complex number 3 to complex number 4 via another carrier that is cytochrome C. And then finally, those hydrogens are accepted with oxygen to form what here, sir? Water. Okay. And because we are adding oxygen here, of course, what is the name of this reaction here? Because we are adding the oxygen here, it is oxidation. Oh, -ho. So oxidation is taking place on which complex? Complex number 4. Oxidation is taking place on which complex, sir? Complex number 4. Very good. And now finally, what is going to happen in the complex number 5? Due to the movement of H plus ions, recall my regular class, due to the movement of H plus ions, energy will be produced and that energy we are going to trap and that energy will be trapped between ADP along with inorganic phosphate to finally form ATP, the energy rich molecule ATP is formed here. And because we are adding the phosphate group here, therefore this one is known as what sir, phosphorylation. Is kya kya karte hain? Phosphorylation. Achha, tabhi to. That is the reason why oxidation taking place on complex number 4 and phosphorylation on complex number 5. And that is a coupled reaction occurring together. And that is the reason why it is known as oxidative decarboxylation. 
oxidative decarboxylation i repeat again i hope you have heard this word a lot of times lot of times but today understand the meaning oxidation taking place on complex number 4 phosphorylation taking place on complex number 5 that is why it is known as oxidative phosphorylation kya baat hai dekh rahe ho sir so in one diagram in one diagram i am giving you everything to learn here everything to learn we are done with the names of the complexes we are done with the carriers in the middle coenzyme q and cytochrome c we are done with the entire mechanism you know oxidation phosphorylation everything is done here and now let us welcome to the most important thing which might definitely come in your january exam i want you all to be like 200% alert here right now sir. okay inhibitors what are the inhibitors of electron transport chain guys have you all he heard about carbon monoxide poisoning hello have you all heard about the carbon monoxide poisoning kabhi suna hai aapne ha ah. and that carbon monoxide is going to inhibit the complex number 4 carbon monoxide inhibits complex number 4 is it okay and my dear doctors the problem in the exam in your mc exam is that they will never give you like in the options as complex number 1 2 3 4 carbon monoxide inhibits complex number 4 ye to sabko acche se pata hota everyone will be remembering that very nicely but they will be giving in the exam name of the complex number 4 what is the name of the complex number 4 cytochrome oxidase but again the same problem with two options okay your examiner loves you a lot that is why he will test you a lot hai na pyar mein imtihan to hota hai hai na ha ye aur baat hai examiner ka aur aapka ek tarfa pyar hai theek hai ha तो पहले दो ऑप्शन आपको दिए जाते हैं साइटोक्रोम ऑक्सीडेज एंड साइटोक्रोम रिडक्टेज और ए बॉन्ड नाउ स्टूडेंट्स आर वेरी हैप्पी इन द क्लास बहो कार्बन मोनोक्साइड इनिविट्स कॉम्प्लेक्स नंबर फोर बट इन द एग्जाम कौन ओके टू ऑप्शन विल बी गिवेन साइटोक्रोम रिडक्टेज एंड साइटोक्रोम ऑक्सीडेज तो प्लीज प्लीज फॉलो माई निमोनिक सी ओ इनिबिट सी ओ यू विल नेवर फर्गेट दैट CO inhibit CO carbon monoxide inhibit cytochrome oxidase and yes june exam question cyanide cyanide is going to inhibit complex number 4 and even remember h2s hydrogen sulfide is also going to inhibit complex number 4 so cyanide carbon monoxide and h2s all of them are going to inhibit the complex number 4 and then what about the complex number 1 guys Complex number one. आपने pharmacology पढ़ा होगा ना? I hope you will have learned pharmacology. In pharmacology, I hope you will have learned about the barbiturates and benzodiazepines. है ना? You have to know that drugs, the sleeping pills. If you take like one tablet and sleep, you'll be getting a nice sleep. But some people here, what they will be doing is suicide, and they'll be taking like so many tablets at a time. At that time, that will be toxicity. And remember, yes, the name of the drug here will be the phenobarbitone. Phenobarbitone inhibits complex number one. And one more substance will be rotenone. And rotenone is going to inhibit the complex number one. Or thoda na dhyan se dekhiye. Observe very carefully. Me kaise likh raha hu? How I am writing there? In both their spelling, you'll be having o any one at the end. and that is going to inhibit the complex number 1 so phenobarbitone and rotenone is going to inhibit the complex number 1 complex number 2 will be inhibited by malonate complex number 3 will be inhibited by antimycin along with antimycin also remember british anti levicide bal british anti levicide and remember one more thing complex number 5 will be inhibited by oligomycin love is it okay so <clears throat> all these are the inhibitors of you know electron transport chain there are so many inhibitors apart from this also that you have to learn for the neat pg exam not for the mc for mc exam agar aap itna yaad rakhoge if you remember this one that is more more than enough my dear friends okay so let us just revise this again i cannot take a risk in inhibitors i am expecting a question in your january exam is it okay so what are the inhibitors of electron transport chain chali ek baar dobara repeat karte hain wherever you are sitting I don't know, but yes, shout it out loud and clear. Okay na? Ah, just like I always say, that na online class me. वैसे मेरे घर वाले तो मुझे पागल कोशिश कर चुके हैं, ठीक है ना? Because I'll be sitting in front of the camera, I'll be shouting here and there. तो आप भी वहाँ से चिल्लाओ और मैं भी यहाँ से चिल्लाता हूँ. साथ साथ में हम लोग चिल्लाते हैं. तुम भी पागल, मैं भी पागल. तो मेरा है. तो carbon monoxide inhibits water. 
complex number 4 cyanide complex number 4 h2s complex number 4 phenobarbitone inhibits complex number 1 rotate non inhibits complex number 1 yes savitri in library also let everyone knows today that we are going live on youtube biochemistry is it okay malonate inhibits complex number 2 antimycin and british anti levicide also inhibits complex number 3 and then oligomycin inhibits complex number so promise me today, promise me today that you are not going to go to the exam without learning inhibitors. Bina inhibitors pade aap exam ko nahi jao ke. Is it okay? And now another important thing. Now one more important thing is about the uncoupler. I told you just now, oxidation and phosphorylation are coupled reactions. What will happen? You will be having uncouplers and there will be uncoupling that reaction. And because uncoupling that reaction, then... <clears throat> Because we, uh, that uh, reaction is like uncoupled, that is why phosphorylation will not occur. And because phosphorylation is not taking place, ATP will not be formed. Also. Okay. I am not going into the detail mechanism right now. Amare paas usna time bhi nahi hai. We have done in detail in the regular class. But just remember right now, uncoupler kya karega? ATP form nahi. So automatically the question that will come in our mind right now is that, ke, achha, agar ATP form nahi hoga, to sir, energy kahan jayega? You know, if ATP is not forming, Okay, ATP form avat le do. Energy ekkad well tundi. Where is the energy going then? That energy will be released in the body as heat energy. That is the work of uncoupler. So, what you have to remember for your exam, for your MC exam, you have to remember the examples of uncoupler. I am writing here. Remember, one of the example of uncoupler will be 2,4 dinitrophenol. I am writing in short form here. As a student, you have to learn the full form, sir. It was given as a full form in the exam. 2,4 dinitrophenol. Another very good uncoupler will be aspirin. Another uncoupler will be aspirin, sir. Okay? Aspirin, but in high doses only, sir. So, 2,4 dinitrophenol and aspirin, these two are uncouplers. Fine. But the problem is that they are not produced in our body. Are there any uncouplers which are produced in our body? Yes, they are known as physiological uncouplers and you have to remember them. Number one physiological uncoupler, thermogenin. Already asked in your exam, thermogenin. Look at that beautiful name given by doctors. Thermo, heat, genin, formation. So, thermogenin means heat formation. Ek bari aapke exam mein example pucha gaya tha. In another exam, they have asked the location, where is thermogenin present? Yes, it will be in the brown adipose tissue or the brown fat. Recently, recently in the exam, they have asked one more example. Thyroxine is also acting like uncoupler. Even the free fatty acid will also act as uncoupler. And as well as bilirubin will also act as uncoupler. So, all these are the examples of your uncoupler. Chalo, milka revise karte. Let us revise together. What are the physiological uncouplers which are naturally produced in our body? So, number one, thermogenin. Number two, thyroxine. Number three, free fatty acid. Number four, bilirubin. Again, thermogenin, thyroxine, the free fatty acid and bilirubin. Thermogenin kaha par hota hai? In the brown adipose tissue. I hope you people have learned about that in the pediatrics also. And my dear doctors, now please look at that one page. You people have written along with me. Agar aap log really mere saath mein likh rahe ho, okay na? I hope you are not making a fool of yourself. Because if you people are not writing... There is no one who is going to lose. It's you who is going to lose that one. So if you are writing there on one page, I guarantee you one mark. On this one page in January exam, one mark definitely will be coming. So learn the names of the complexes, learn the, uh, the carriers between them and learn the entire mechanism, the oxidative phosphorylation, how it is taking place and then learn about the inhibitors and learn the uncouplers. So this is what you have to learn, yes, in the electron transport. So after our class today, after our session today, what you do is take a neat page there, take a white paper there and write it neatly with a colorful pen and pencil and please paste it wherever you are studying sir. This page will give you one mark. This page will give you like one mark sir. <clears throat> yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you Dr. Aspirin. <laughs> thank you. Thank you Dr. Medicine. <clears throat> now, now please come back to this question here sir. Carbon monoxide inhibits. I have told you what in class, every student is learning it is inhibiting complex number 4. But that fellow will give in the exam names. 
understanding we can easily rule easily rule out these two but the problem is with these two right now cytochrome reductase cytochrome oxidase and what is our mnemonic what is our mnemonic carbon monoxide is co co inhibits co cytochrome oxidase yes understood now sir that's all so <clears throat> i hope all of you are happy now guys okay one mark for sure kya baat hai sir aaj se na start kar do preparing for 299 mark one mark pakka aa gaya hai sir तो अब से ना 299 के लिए स्टार्ट कर दो प्रिपरेशन ठीक है चलो एक टॉपिक हो गया नाउ लेट अस गो टू द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक दैट वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न नाउ इज प्रोटीन्स टॉपिक ओके हम्म नाउ इन प्रोटीन्स टॉपिक इफ आई एम एट योर प्लेस हेलो माय डियर डॉक्टर्स आर यू रेडी फॉर द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक नाउ गिव मी अ थम्स अप आर यू विद मी I hope like we are done with half an hour of session, sir. <clears throat> we are done with like half an hour of session right now. I hope everything is going comfortably. You are able to follow me, or do you need any changes, my dear, uh, my dear students? My dear students, do you need any changes? I hope everything is going perfectly. Chal, badiya sir, badiya. Very nice, very nice. That is really nice of you people. Uh huh, uh huh. That's really nice. <clears throat> अब हम पढ़ेंगे दूसरा टॉपिक द सेकंड टॉपिक दैट वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न राइट नाउ इज प्रोटीन स्टॉक इफ आई एम एट यूर प्लेस एज अ स्टूडेंट प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर नेक्स्ट एफ एम जी एग्जाम ओके वॉट आई विल डू इन माई माइंड इज दैट आई शुड हैव अ क्लैरिटी वॉट टू स्टडी वॉट नॉट टू स्टडी इन प्रोटीन स्टॉपिक आई विल सिंपली डिवाइड दिस टॉपिक इन टू थ्री पार्ट ओके एक्चुअली प्रोटीन आर मेड अब वॉट्स अमाइनो एसिड यू ऑल नो वेरी वेल तो अमाइनो एसिड्स का क्लासिफिकेशन पढ़ना जरूरी है number one thing okay now during rapid revision time don't ask me sir what is the meaning of protein protein is made up of amino acid amino acids are building blocks of protein oh, yeah, yeah. all that we have done in our regular classes yeah? what are proteins they are made up of amino what are amino acids they are the building blocks of protein oh yeah, yeah. kya baat understanding so not that right now now what to study what not to study is it okay so amino acid classification is important number one and second thing what you have to learn is about amino acids are going to form some important products i am have to learn about those products and then of course we have to learn about certain diseases here if you people are looking at the recall question in the june exam there was a question from disease and here we have to just learn about like you know somewhere around 3 to 4 diseases and pakka one question will come from that four diseases only In last June exam, there was a question about alkaptonuria, black urine disease. So again, I am telling you, first of all, have a clarity in your mind. As in a randomly, mat padho. Don't have that, uh, you know, very much uh, cluttered, cluttered thing in your mind. Here, proteins me padna kya? Clarity. Amino acid classification, and then important products from amino acid, and then the disease. And first, let us focus on the diseases. Yes. One of my brother here in the uh, in the chat section he was writing there. Okay, sir. Uh, आजकल जैसे questions आ रहे हैं ना उसके हिसाब से पढ़ाइए. Teach according to like uh, whatever type of questions are coming nowadays in the exam. Yes, my dear younger brother. <coughs> uh, welcome here. Okay. So you are able to see on the screen here there is a clinical question given over there along with the image based. So nowadays they are giving the image based question also in the exam. Is it okay? So now welcome, welcome, welcome to this clinical. is it okay so i have come up with everything in this session here we are going to see the clinical questions also as well as with image based questions are also coming from biochemistry chaliye milkar padhte hain so let us read it together a 40 year old man presented with black ache his sclera of eyes and pinna have black pigmentation i hope you remember this condition the sclera of the eye the pinna here the cartilage the ochronosis isko hum kehte hain ochronosis remember that word very good dr arman very good excellent dr arman ochronosis kehte hain the urine collected is also shown in the picture and you can very clearly see normally the urine will be slightly yellowish in color but if you keep it for some time the color of the urine changes to black color or coke color and of course yes this is which this is alkaptone urea what is the name of the disease alkaptone urea okay and in alkaptone urea that is your black urine disease hello number 1 alkaptone urea it is also known as what's a black urine disease 
Are you all writing there? <coughs> yes, yes, yes. Very good, very good. Huh? So, alkaptonuria or black urine disease or any disease whenever you are learning in biochemistry, first of all, what is enzyme deficient? The enzyme deficient in alkaptonuria will be homogentisate oxidase. Homogentisate oxidase is the enzyme deficient in alkaptonuria. And what is the clinical feature? The important clinical feature here is this one. The number one thing here, the color of the urine changes to black color or coke color. And the second thing that you have to remember is this condition here. That is nothing but, yes, blackish pigmentation in your sclera as well as, you know, deposition of homogentisate in the cartilage. And cartilage which is normally like white or shiny color will get converted to like black color. So, which cartilage here? Yes, you can see in the uh, pinna. In the auricle or the pinna, we have elastic cartilage and that white cartilage will now get converted to what, sir? It will be converting into black color. That is why we will be having blackish discoloration here. Black is discoloration here and all those things and that condition is known as what? Ochronomy. Yes, yes, very good, very good. Now the next thing guys. So these are the things to remember. That was the June exam question. First disease completed here. Now welcome to the second disease. Enzyme defect in the given image. Actually in the given image, you are able to see this condition is albinism. Albinism, okay. And now my dear doctors, I hope all of you have learned that there is an amino acid known as tyrosine and tyrosine is the amino acid which is going to form melanin. <coughs> tyrosine is going to form melanin in the presence of an enzyme. The name of the enzyme will be tyrosinase. It's very simple. You have to just A's. Laga na hoga, so tyrosine is going to form melanin in the presence of tyrosinase. Now if there is a defect in this enzyme, melanin form nahi hoga. Yeah, normally what will happen if melanin level increases, hyperpigmentation. If melanin decreases, hyperpigmentation. If there is no melanin at all, agar melanin nahi hoga, there will be no pigmentation. Okay, so therefore what is happening here? Yes, that is albinism condition. Yes, the enzyme defect in the given image will be tyrosine. <coughs> and I am like really, really happy to see the, you know, uh, with the replies in the chat box over there, everyone is answering very, very correctly. Second condition is done, albinism. So, albinism mein aapko bas yaad rakhna hoga, tyrosinase. I hope you are writing those points guys, somewhere. Now, welcome to the third condition. Okay. And please don't forget the planning what we are discussing here. We are discussing proteins topic and in proteins topic, we are actually discussing first about all the diseases. Now, welcome to this condition here. A two-year-old boy, intellectually disabled, okay. There is some neurological disorder. The child is having the blue eyes, the blonde hairs and the fair skin. And that is indicating that there is decrease in melanin. Okay. And he also have a peculiar body odor. Okay. What is the diagnosis? Remember, first of all, can anyone tell me in the chat box which disease is this one? Remember, this disease here is telling you about phenylketonuria. Phenylketonuria. And now tell me what is the enzyme deficient in the phenylketonuria? Yeah, that is phenylalanine hydroxylase. Remember the enzyme deficient? I'm telling you slowly here. Phenylalanine hydroxylase enzyme will be deficient. Okay. After that, what will be the clinical features? How to remember the clinical features? <coughs> Now, all my students who attend my class, my regular classes, they know very well, okay, that my dear friends, I don't want to mug up guys. I want to understand, okay, why is all these things happening in the penile ketone area? So, let us just go back a little bit. There is an amino acid known as phenylalanine and phenylalanine is getting converted to tyrosine. Listen to me very carefully for two minutes. So, phenylalanine is getting converted to what here? Tyrosine. How? Ah, it is by addition of OH group. Can you just recall? Simple. Simple. It's very simple. Just recall what is the name of OH group. OH group is nothing but hydroxyl group. And because we are adding the hydroxyl group here, that is why the name of the enzyme will be hydroxylase. 
and whenever you have to make the complete name of the enzyme add the name of the substrate so substrate ka naam kya hoga phenyl alanine hydroxylase simple okay so phenyl alanine hydroxylase that is what i wrote you there you know phi p a h and now once this tyrosine is formed tyrosine is very important amino number 1 it is going to form melanin maine aapko abhi abhi bataya tha just now i told you in the last question tyrosine is the one which is going to form t3 and t4 the thyroid hormones and tyrosine is also going to form what sir catecholamines and i hope all my student knows very well what are the catecholamines dopamine norepinephrine and epinephrine dopamine norepinephrine and epinephrine these are catecholamines oh ho ab thoda sa dimag lagao now apply apply your common sense if this phenyl alanine hydroxylase enzyme is deficient this reaction will not occur then tyrosine will decrease then there is decrease melanin if there is a decrease melanin in the skin the skin is going to become like fair so fair skin and melanin is not only present in the skin it is also in the hair and there is decrease melanin in the hair the hair will convert into golden yellow color you can clearly see those will be the blonde and then the melanin is also in the eyes the eyes are going to become like blue oh so it's all because of this decrease melanin in here lovely second thing is that agar tyrosine nahi hoga if there is no tyrosine then t3 t4 will also decrease and t3 t4 my dear friends remember thyroid hormones have got like many many functions i hope you people have learned all that functions in physiology endocrine physiology okay so now i will tell you one of the function thyroid hormones are necessary for the proper development of brain proper development of your central nervous system understanding in growing children thyroid hormones are necessary for proper development of brain aur agar brain properly develop nahi hoga if the brain doesn't develop properly that will lead to mental retardation so that is what is given in the first line here so in the first line it is like intellectually disabled and yes of course in phenyl ketonuria there will be peculiar body odor i hope you all remember there will be mousy or musty odor i repeat again mousy or musty odor wow so this question is like give away i would like to tell to all my students who met me during the regular classes and told ke sir clinical question mein bahut dikkat hoti hai sir we are having a big problem solving clinical question bhai sahab all my dear brothers and sisters over there yes look at that question look at that question that question is shouting there you know please mark phenyl ketonuria please mark phenyl ketonuria that's the beauty of clinical question don't have a phobia don't fear clinical question is like give away actually agar aap mujhe sahi puchoge na to be very frank with you people i'm having a fear with one liner as a student i'm having a fear with one liners because in one liner questions because in one liners my dear friends there is nothing much give away there in one line you have to identify like what will be the option there understanding but in clinical question in that four five lines it will be like giving away everything sir. everything is given away there. there is mental retardation there is decreased melanin fair skin blonde hair blue eyes and then yes there is mousy or musty odor everything is given there very clearly you just have to mark phenyl ketone urea understanding my dear friends lovely so we have discussed everything regarding this one here you can see whatever notes i am writing there the name of the disease is phenyl ketone urea enzyme deficient will be phenyl alanine hydroxylase and i told you the mechanism i told you how to remember this one so isliye main keh raha hu sir please be with me for this 2 hours of session here guys why because hello my dear friends <clears throat> in this 2 hours we are going to discuss all the high yield knowledge is it okay and my my main intention will be not just mugging up my dear friends my main intention will be like not just you know giving some points or aap isko seekh lo nahi seekhte kaise hai how to learn the things easy okay na welcome here chalo sir let us go to the next one here <clears throat> next disease here my dear friends and this is like the definite question in your next fmg exam ye aapke matlab don't don't think that you know it is the same question that is going to come in the exam okay it is like a definite concept that is going to be coming in the exam sir okay na in the chat box someone is writing there please go fast sir if possible bhai sahab uh, like i would like to uh, tell like i as a teacher i have to take care about all my students some will be like slow learners some will be fast learners so i'm just trying to go in an average manner 
so don't worry nothing like that i'm not going to take much of your time here okay i hope we are going with a fine speed here a two week old neonate with a complete hypotonia convulsions failure to thrive metabolic acidosis okay ji the baby has a smell of burnt sugar in the urine that's all mujhe aur kuch nahi chahiye this one key word is enough to solve the question burnt sugar order in the urine burnt sugar order in the urine i hope all of you remember bcas branch chain amino acid what are branch chain amino acid valine leucine isoleucine and these valine isoleucine leucine and isoleucine will undergo certain metabolism and finally form some products with don't worry about that pathway don't worry about the product main aapko jitna keh raha hu utna padhiye okay understanding my point here yes thank you thank you dr deep valine leucine isoleucine are branch chain amino acid come on learn learn branch chain amino acids are valine leucine isoleucine and now my dear friends you don't have to learn the pathway you don't have to worry about the product now during this pathway okay, somewhere in the middle you will be getting one enzyme only that one enzyme you have to remember sir what is the name of the enzyme now these are branch chain amino acid and kosam in the name you will be having branch chain and from the amino acid if you remove the ammonia what is left out keto acid and kosam the name will be having keto acid and here oxidation is taking place and i hope every medical student knows that oxidation here will be like removal of hydrogen and there is nothing but dehydrogenase so what is the complete name of the enzyme branched chain keto acid dehydrogenase branched chain keto acid dehydrogenase are you repeating the name with me are you all repeating the name with me <clears throat> don't just sit there and listen oh ho oh, oh, azam sir is re repeating very nicely don't worry about azam sir here azam sir's biochemistry will be almost done like 30 40 times in one year be concerned about your biochemistry which will be done once in lifetime is it okay and that is what we have to do once in lifetime study and put it in the exam in january khatam finish off understanding so please repeat that along with me branch chain keto acid dehydrogenase it is going to come in your next january exam branch chain keto acid dehydrogen bc kd is it okay <clears throat> don't take me wrongly it is bc kd branch chain keto acid dehydrogen is it okay so what is the importance here yes if this enzyme is deficient it will lead to a disease what is the name of the disease the name of the disease will be maple syrup urine disease msud if this is deficient it will lead to maple syrup urine disease and in maple syrup urine disease why the word is given like that maple syrup urine because of the odor the smell the smell of the urine will be like burnt sugar burnt sugar like smell it will be so you have to just remember all these keywords number one keyword if i am at your place yes sir what is the name of the disease maple syrup urine disease enzyme deficient bckd then what is the smell in the urine burnt sugar like smell in the urine burnt sugar like uh, odor in the urine sir. is it okay so what is the what is the option here sir that is nothing but branch chain keto acid dehydrogenase branch chain keto acid dehydrogen b c k d is it okay definite question in the january exam is it okay to chalo ek bar na hum log fatafat revise karte hain like whatever diseases i told you four things and from this four things definitely a question will come in the exam okay in the rapid revision session also i'm revising for you people wow number one disease alcaptonuria enzyme deficient homogenesis oxidase black urine Number two, you are going to remember albinism. Albinism enzyme tyrosinase. Number three, you are going to remember about phenyl ketonuria. Very important. Phenyl alanine hydroxylase. Remember this picture in your mind. A Russian. Russian ko yad karlo, bhai. Foreign medical graduates. You know Russian very well, hai na? <coughs> Mere se better to aap jaante ho, hai na? Not only just theoretically, practically also, hai na? So just remember one Russian phenyl ketonuria. Fair skin, blonde hair, blue eyes. mental retardation will be already there and there will be like odor you uh, know very bad bad odor mousy or musty odor from there is it okay <laughs> don't take me wrongly uh, don't make it something like viral ki azam so told something against russian and all no no i love russians a lot okay don't take me wrongly but just for the sake of remembering yaad rakhne ke liye just up to january exam okay chalo 
नेक्स्ट डिसीज दैट वी हैव लर्न इज हां पक्का क्वेश्चन इन जनवरी एग्जाम ब्रांच चेन कीटो एसिड डिहाइड्रोजेनेज मेपल सिरप यूरिन डिसीज चलो सर आगे बढ़ते हैं एल्कैप्टोन्यूरिया इज ड्यू टू डेफिशिएंसी ऑफ ऑलरेडी वी हैव डिस्कस्ड दिस वन हियर गाइस एल्कैप्टोन्यूरिया इज ब्लैक यूरिन डिसीज एंड ब्लैक यूरिन डिसीज इज ड्यू टू डेफिशिएंसी ऑफ होमोजेनेसिड ऑक्सीडेज नाउ यू कैन आंसर इन लेस देन 1 मिनट लिमिटिंग अमाइनो एसिड व्हिच इज सीन इन हार्ट नप डिसीज इन हार्ट नप डिसीज व्हाट इज गोइंग टू हैपन इज there will be decreased absorption of amino acid from intestine i repeat again decreased absorption of amino acid from intestine and which amino acid will be decreased there is tryptophan so there will be decreased tryptophan okay and you know one thing just now i told you about tyrosine tyrosine is going to form melanin and then t3 t4 and then catecholamine similarly please note down about tryptophan tryptophan is going to form melatonin tryptophan is going to form melatonin i think you people are observing there why i am stressing a lot there melato melatonin just now we have learned about melanin melanin is formed from tyrosine but remember melatonin will be formed from tryptophan melatonin will be formed from tryptophan understanding and not only melatonin sir even serotonin oh ho and serotonin is known as 5 ht lovely and then one more thing that is your vitamin b3 also sir very important vitamin b3 nothing but your niacin is also formed from tryptophan is it okay so let us repeat this again right now tryptophan is going to form three substances melatonin serotonin and vitamin b3 again melatonin serotonin and vitamin b3 is formed from tryptophan अंदम लिजन वेरी केफुली लिजन टू मी वेरी वेरी केफुली हार्ट नर्व डिज ट्रिप्टोफैन विल नॉट बी देर इफ देर इज नो ट्रिप्टोफैन वैटमीन बी थ्री विल नॉट बी देर वैटमीन बी थ्री विल नॉट बी देर पेलाग्रा लाइक सिमटम्स विल आर यू अंडरस्टैंडिंग के सीखते कैसे है हाउ टू लर्न द थिंग्स अंडरस्टैंडिंग I repeat again. It heart nerves disease. There is decreased tryptophan, decreased tryptophan, decreased vitamin B3, decreased vitamin B3. Will lead to what, sir? Pellagra-like symptoms in this disease. Okay, chalo, sir. Badiya. <clears throat> After that, vitamin B3 synthesized from. Now the opposite question I have given here. Vitamin B3 will be synthesized from which amino acid? That is your tryptophan, sir. Abhi abhi maine aapko isliye padaya tha. so now my dear doctors my dear doctors please take up a paper and write on that maine aapko kya kaha tha i told you learn that four five diseases in the book second thing that we have to learn is which amino acid is going to form which important products few of them i told you chalo let us try writing together there is an amino acid known as tyrosine tyrosine is going to form what guys it is going to form melanin and it is also going to form thyroid hormones t3 t4 as well as it is also going to form catecholamines and then the second one will be tryptophan and tryptophan is going to form melatonin please remember that tryptophan is going to form melatonin and then it is also going to form serotonin and then it is also going to form what sir vitamin b3 next one after that the next amino acid that i want you to remember very much important nowadays for your exam is arginine arginine is going to form nitric oxide can anyone tell me the formula cheppandi cheppandi thondaraga thondaraga cheppandi solle solle arginine is going to form nitric oxide what is the formula of nitric oxide very good very good very good praveen very good bhumi very good harshit very good priyanka very nice very good handsome doctor uh huh are <coughs> handsome doctor everyone here mercy n apne naam bhi laga do bhai <coughs> please uh, please use your name my dear friends all my dear doctors here fmg is here you are all grown up people i just want to convey my my message to you people that we all are here working for our name hai na hai na hum aap log hum log apne naam ke liye to kaam kar Everyone is every another person is earning money. Money doesn't matter. It isn't going to come out come along with. You know, if tomorrow if I am not here in this world, remember, money and everything will not matter. I want some people to remember. Ha, yar, ek pagal sa teacher tha. Anatomy, biochemistry, prata tha. Yes, 
कुछ हेल्प करता था हमारी बस वो याद तो नेम तो व्हाई आर यू हाइडिंग योर नेम डोंट हाइड योर नेम ठीक है ना वी आर ऑल वर्किंग फॉर अवर नेम ओनली दैट्स द रीजन व्हाई पीपल हैव ऑप्टेड फॉर योर एमबीबीएस यू वेंट टू द फॉरेन कंट्री ऑल दैट हार्ड वर्क एंड यू हैव कम बैक हियर यू आर स्टडीइंग हियर देन व्हाई टू हाइड आवर नेम लेट्स से आवर नेम प्राउडली यस आई एम आई एम डॉक्टर आजम फैकल्टी ऑफ एनाटॉमी समथिंग लाइक दैट आई एम डॉक्टर सो एंड सो है ना समथिंग लाइक दैट तो व्हाई यू आर हाइडिंग योर नेम सर डोंट हाइड योर नेम ओके ना हैंडसम डॉक्टर लव यू ब्रदर so arginine is going to form nitric oxide formula yaad rakhiye no hai na thank you thank you dr amma and already asked in your exam histidine histidine is going to form histamine <coughs> histidine is going to form histamine is it okay yes my dear friends but in the exam they have asked how how it is formed by decarboxylation and recently one of the important amino acid that is being asked in exam will be glycine so, and glycine is the one which is required for heme synthesis it is helping in the formation of heme number 2 it is also helping in the formation of purine ring number 3 glycine is also helping in the formation of glutathione and glycine is also helping in the formation of creatinine so, so glycine has got like many many functions it is helping in the formation of heme helping in the formation of purine ring helping in the formation of glutathione as well as creatinine is it okay so <clears throat> this is extremely important table you can expect one question you can expect one question from this table also like which amino acid is going to form which important substance now after that my dear friends welcome to the last and final concept in the proteins topic that you have to learn here that is about the amino acid okay amino acid and its classification All of the following are aromatic amino acid except one. What are aromatic amino acid? Tyrosine, tryptophan, and the phenylalanine. Except the cysteine. Cysteine is actually sulfur-containing amino acid. But my intention is not about this question which is given here. Sir. No, no, no. My intention is not only about this question which is given here. My intention is actually about discussing the classification of amino acid. Welcome here. You can also expect one question from this topic. Now, classification of amino acid. I'll give you like three classifications. Sir. number one classification based on structure number two classification based on the metabolic fate and number three classification based on the nutritional requirement okay so chalo dekhte hain one by one the first classification is based on structure and based on structure all your 20 amino acid we are going to divide them into seven groups how many groups totally seven groups okay and now because we are doing the rapid revision here so we are not going to waste our time here isliye wherever we can save the time there have already written that one so it's all well planned you just be with me okay now <coughs> yes thank you thank you dr zaman thank you arman yes my dear friends first is aliphatic amino acid based on structure aliphatic amino acid there are five of them glycine alanine valine leucine isoleucine glycine alanine valine leucine isoleucine next one the next group will be the oh group containing amino acid that is hydroxyl group containing amino acid. that is serine and threonine serine and threonine sulfur containing amino acid will be only two of them cysteine and methionine cysteine and methionine very good and then acidic amino acid aspartic acid glutamic acid asparagine and glutamine basic amino acid will be the lysine arginine and histidine and then aromatic amino acid will be Phenyl alanine, tyrosine, tryptophan, and then finally the amino acid. It's not amino; it's amino acid. And amino acid will be proline. Proline will be the amino acid. Is it okay? So these are all the twenty amino acid divided based on the structure. So yes, my dear friends, I hope you are observing there. Is all everything planned? जहाँ पर अपने को time waste नहीं करना है, it's already written there. बस आपको memorize करना होगा. You have to memorize this one. Now in this, I'll tell you one thing here. <clears throat> already we have discussed in this that. valine leucine and isoleucine these three will be the branch chain amino acid bcs and you know very well what to remember and i want you to remember some points regarding glycine please remember out of all the 20 amino acid glycine will be the simplest amino acid and not only simplest it is the smallest amino acid so simplest and smallest amino acid will be glycine number 2 number 2 second point is that remember Glycine is the most abundant amino acid in collagen. I hope you are writing these points. In collagen protein, glycine is the most abundant one. And remember the third point: 
द बेंड्स और फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी द बेंड्स और फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी इन द प्रोटीन चेन इफ यू सी अ प्रोटीन चेन इट इज मेड अपन अमाइनो एसिड एंड इन दैट प्रोटीन चेन इफ देयर इज अ बेंड एट दैट बेंड यू विल बी फाइंडिंग ग्लाइसिन और वाइसी वर्ड्स आई कैन से दैट द बेंड इज फॉर्म ड्यू टू व्हाट्स अ ग्लाइसिन बिकॉज़ इट इज द स्मॉलेस्ट वन इट कैन अकोमोडेट इन दैट बेंड इजी सो प्लीज रिमेंबर दिस थ्री एमसीक्यूज डायरेक्टली देयर सिंपलेस्ट एंड स्मॉलेस्ट अमाइनो एसिड ग्लाइसिन most abundant in collagen glycine and bends of flexibility in the protein chain it is also due to what's a glycine only so this is the first classification based on structure now welcome to the second classification based on nutritional requirement essential non essential and semi essential amino acids i don't have to tell you about the uh, definition of that one definition every student knows from school days we are learning the amino acid which are not produced in our body hamari body mein jo produce नहीं होता है एंड वी हैव टू एसेंशियली टेक इन अवर डाइट दैट इज नथिंग बट एसेंशियल अमाइनो एसिड एंड हाउ टू रिमेंबर द निमोनिक टी वी टिल 8 पीएम एंड नाउ व्हाई इज डॉक्टर आजम टेलिंग टू वॉच द टीवी ओनली अप टू 8 पीएम काउंट द टोटल नंबर ऑफ अमाइनो एसिड विल बी 8 एसेंशियल अमाइनो एसिड टी वी टिल 8 पीएम वी कैन रिमेंबर द नंबर लाइक दैट नाउ व्हाट इज दिस टी वी टिल 8 पीएम सर वेलकम बैक हियर T for three o nine, V for valine, T V, T for tryptophan, I for isoleucine, L for leucine, and L for lysine. T V till eight p.m. P stands for phenylalanine, M for methionine. So whatever amino acid I have highlighted here in yellow color, remember all of them will be the essential amino acid. How to remember for the exam? TV till 8 pm essential amino acid TV till 8 pm essential amino acid is it okay done now after that remember here itself my dear friends arginine and histidine these two arginine and histidine these two will be semi essential amino acid arginine and histidine will be due to what's a semi essential amino acids here so main yahan par just likhta hu a n h arginine and histidine But again, the same thing. Your examiner loves you a lot. He will be giving both options. Which of the following is a semi-essential amino acid? First option arginine. Second option histidine. अगर दोनों ऑप्शन दिया जाएगा, better option will be arginine. Mark arginine there. Understanding? Now, what are the non-essential? No need to learn. Rest all. Rest all will be the non-essential amino. So follow my trick here. How to deal with this one? Essential amino acid will be TV till LPM and then semi-essential amino acid will be arginine and histidine. Both of them are semi-essential. अगर दोनों ऑप्शन दिया जाएगा, बेटर ऑप्शन विल बी आर्जिनाइन. Very good, Mahesh Kumar. है ना? And then rest all will be the non-essential. Done. Okay. Now welcome to the last and final classification. As I told you, yes, based on metabolic. Now what will happen? Some of the amino acids will undergo metabolism to form ketone bodies. Ketogenic amino. some of them are going to form glucose glucogenic amino acids and some will be forming both ketone bodies as well as glucose so ketogenic and glucogenic okay but again the same thing they will never ask you about the definition it's all about the examples examples yaad rakhna zaruri hai so ketogenic amino acid will be number 1 leucine and number 2 it will be lysine agar dono option diya jayega better option will be leucine because leucine is more ketogenic when compared to lysine What are these glucogenic and ketogenic sir? aromatic amino acids? What are aromatic amino acids, guys? Number one, tyrosine. Number two, tryptophan. And number three will be the phenylalanine. Along with aromatic amino acid, add their isoleucine. So aromatic plus isoleucine. I remember like this. But some of the students are like, sir, do you have a mnemonic for this one? Of course. That is P I T T PIT. So phenylalanine, isoleucine, the tyrosine, and tryptophan. This will be the glucogenic and ketogenic. Please remember only this one. Ketogenic only two of them. Leucine, lysine. Glucogenic and ketogenic will be four of them. Remember PIT. Khatam. Rest all will be glucogenic. So so many amino acids will be having the ability to form the glucose. So rest all will be what sir glucose. Very good, Praveen. Very nice. Excellent. Chali. 
तो जैसे मैंने आपको प्रॉमिस किया था एज ए प्रोमिस क्लासिफिकेशन विल बी ऑफ थ्री कैटेगरीज बेस्ड ऑन स्ट्रक्चर बेस्ड ऑन द मेटाबॉलिक फेट एंड देन बेस्ड ऑन द न्यूट्रिशनल रिक्वायरमेंट वन क्वेश्चन डेफिनेटली विल बी कमिंग फ्रॉम योर ओके नाउ लेट एस सी जस्ट द अपडेट राइट नाउ we are in total having how many amino acid 20 but nowadays we also have get like you know 21st amino acid which of the following is 21st 21st will be selenocysteine so remember 21st amino acid will be selenocysteine i want you all to remember one more point here selenocysteine will be formed by when this question was given for the very first time some student wrote the answer as selenium some wrote the answer as cysteine selenocysteine is not from selenium not from cysteine it is formed from serine oh group containing amino acids remember that and now which codon will be coding for this amino acid my dear doctors do you all remember that stop codons mm hmm u a a u a g u g a these are the stop code answer u a a u a g u g a in our regular classes we had a lot of fun learning this stop code ons stop code ons yaad karte waqt humne bahut enjoy kiya tha because different different people throughout india has got different different methods of learning this one and some people are like uwa uwag uga pata nahi kya kya okay so remember out of this code on out of this stop code on here UGA codes for 21st amino acid and here itself let me give you like one more update there is 22nd amino acid 22nd amino acid remember it is pyrolysine and for pyrolysine please remember the codon which is coding and again it is a stop codon that is UAG okay so i want you to remember these many points for 21st and 22nd amino acid so i repeat again 21st amino acid will be selenocysteine and selenocysteine will be formed from serine it is formed from serine and the codon coding for that will be uga 22nd amino acid will be pyrolysine and pyrolysine will be coded by uag so please remember this one here is it okay urea cycle sir one last and final thing in the protein metabolism is urea cycle urea cycle will be taking place where okay i will tell you what are the points to be remembered sir sabse pehle aap aap log na padhoge what is the another name of urea cycle urea cycle it is also known as ornithine cycle okay or else number 2 it is also known as what sir krebs hanslet cycle urea cycle or ornithine cycle so i hope you people are writing the points there so i'm telling you like what are the points you have to memorize or otherwise if you people if you people have already attended my class and if you have the notes along with you please keep on marking with some different color so pehle aap iska naam yaad rakhoge urea cycle is also known as ornithine cycle also known as krebs hanslet cycle and if in your fmg exam most of the time they have used this word only ornithine cycle that is why another name important second thing that you have to remember is what is the location where is urea cycle taking place of course it is taking place in liver but where inside the liver remember few reactions will take place in cytosol and few reactions will take place in mitochondria and that answers your question here the urea cycle occurs in both cytoplasm as well as mitochondria After that, remember the rate limiting enzyme. What is the rate limiting enzyme of urea cycle? It is CPS one. Carbamoyl phosphate synthase one. Carbamoyl phosphate synthase one. CPS one is the rate limiting enzyme. Okay. And then, by the way, like what is the formula of urea? Remember the formula of urea will be NH two CO NH two. Fine. Now, in your exam, they are asking the question that from this NH two CO NH two, what are the sources? From where are we getting this one? Remember the first. NH2 group is obtained from ammonium ion the CO group will be obtained from carbon dioxide and one more NH2 group is obtained from aspartate oh ho so urea cycle it is also known as ornithine cycle also known as krebs hanslet cycle this taking place in the liver both in cytoplasm as well as mitochondria rate limiting enzyme will be cps1 formula of urea is NH2 CO NH2 and in that my dear friends the first NH2 group is given by ammonium ion CO group is given by carbon dioxide and one more NH2 group is given by aspartate please remember this one so if you remember this points i hope you'll be able to answer like most of the questions in the urea cycle acha after learning this points if you still have some time and if you still have some stamina energy left out then yes of course you can even learn the entire cycle also it's better it's better always learning the cycle also. is it okay but 
what i am trying to tell don't take my words wrongly okay first you have to be perfect with this four five points after this five points are done then go for the cycle you learn the entire cycle okay so that completes our proteins topic one of the biggest topic is then my dear friends <coughs> just relax a bit take a deep breath okay drink some water one big big topic is done proteins topic aur aapko kya karna hai protein topic divide that into amino acid classification the three classification one question can come diseases i told you phenyl ketone urea alkaptonuria maple syrup urine disease heart nerve disease in albinism four five diseases from there one question pakka will come and then amino acid and the important products obtained from them wo padhna zaruri hai understanding at last you can see the urea cycle is it okay is it okay my dear friends so that completes one big 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 topic so proteins topic is complete now moving ahead uh, dr vyas is asking sir anatomy yeah we will be doing the anatomy revision also don't worry whoever was asking like anatomy anatomy revision wo bhi main aapko karaunga i promised you people that i am going to be along with you people till your january exam okay na so just be with me i'll be in touch with you till that yes ha 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 yes of course dr zulfikar i'll i'll surely do that for you okay na? today let us deal with the biochemistry first of all then later on we'll be even doing the anatomy part also अरे ऑफ कोर्स ऑफ कोर्स टॉकिर मिंटो मिंटो इज आस्किंग सर मोटिवेशन दे दो अच्छा डॉक्टर मिंटो आई थिंक यू यू हैव नॉट जॉइन अस इन द वेरी अर्ली इन द वेरी बिगनिंग ऑफ द वीडियो यू कैन वॉच द वीडियो आफ्टर आफ्टर कंप्लीटिंग द सेशन आल्सो आई टोल्ड यू ऑल द थिंग्स दैट यू हैव टू डू हियर डॉक्टर मिंटो इट्स नॉट ओनली अबाउट द मोटिवेशन माय डियर फ्रेंड्स आई हैव रेड इट समवेयर मोटिवेशन विल बी फॉर सम टाइम बट डिसिप्लिन एंड कंसिस्टेंसी इज इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर यू so please don't get diverted from your track you were in the right momentum for your exam so you know consistency is important come on keep on studying don't get relaxed don't get laid back additional time take it like an opportunity take it like an opportunity now okay now so whoever did not learn biochemistry thinking it is a difficult subject now it is the time to do the biochemistry along with me sir okay so chalo hum aage badhte hain so one big big topic is done sir <coughs> thank you thank you dr papri चलो सर चलो सर ओके ओके नो प्रॉब्लम या या आई एम आई एम आई एम कमिंग देयर नो प्रॉब्लम थैंक यू थैंक यू नाउ द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक दैट वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न इज एंजाइम्स टॉपिक हेलो माय डियर फ्रेंड्स अगेन आई होप यू आर राइटिंग डाउन देयर इन एंजाइम्स टॉपिक इन एवरी एग्जाम वन क्वेश्चन फॉर श्योर सर वन मार्क पक्का आएगा एंड इन जून एग्जाम आल्सो वन क्वेश्चन वाज आस्क्ड इन द एग्जाम सो व्हाटएवर आई टेल यू प्लीज रिमेंबर दैट वन सर ठीक है ना First of all, all my dear doctors, in enzymes topic you have to learn about the Michaelis-Menten graph. Okay, I hope all of you people have seen this Michaelis-Menten graph here. Let me write down the name if anyone doesn't know. This is Michaelis-Menten graph, and Michaelis-Menten graph will give a relation between the concentration of substrate and the velocity of reaction. I hope all of you know that in the reaction there will be substrate, and then in the in the presence of enzyme it is going to form the product. Simple. substrate enzyme product aur agar aap substrate concentration badaoge if you increase the concentration of substrate amount of substrate increase jaise velocity of reaction could increase out in the so it is directly proportional to the velocity of the reaction keep that in mind so on x axis we are taking the concentration of substrate on y axis we are taking the velocity and because it is directly proportional proportional there so therefore you are able to see the parabolic graph जैसे जैसे सब्सट्रेट बढ़ता जाएगा वेलोसिटी बढ़ता जाएगा एज सब्सट्रेट कीप्स ऑन इंक्रीजिंग यू नो वेलोसिटी विल आल्सो कीप ऑन इंक्रीजिंग गाइस इज इट ओके फाइन हियर नाउ नाउ इन दिस माइकलीज मेंटन ग्राफ देयर इज अ कांस्टेंट नोन एज माइकलीज मेंटन कांस्टेंट एंड माइकलीज मेंटन कांस्टेंट इज रिप्रेजेंटेड बाय केएम नाउ व्हाट इज दिस केएम सर इट इज कंसंट्रेशन ऑफ सब्सट्रेट ओनली बट व्हेन एट हाफ द मैक्सिमम वेलोसिटी so in this graph somewhere here you are getting the maximum velocity saturation point here is like v max okay now and half the maximum velocity somewhere in the middle this is like v max by 2 half the maximum velocity at half the maximum velocity whatever is the concentration of substrate this is nothing but your km okay and what is km sir michaelis menten constant yes very good very good ajit singh very nice ha ah. So what is Michaelis Menten constant? It is represented by Km, and Km value will be defined as substrate concentration at half the maximum velocity. 
So I think in this option number one is correct. It is not twice the maximum velocity. It is not the maximum velocity, not the one third. It is half the maximum velocity. Substrate concentration at half the maximum velocity. Okay. Now, now you people understood this terminology. Concentration of substrate, velocity of the reaction, and then V max stand for you know maximum velocity and Km stands for Michaelis Menten constant. And now for your exam on 20th, 20th Jan inhibition, enzyme inhibition. The question will be definitely coming from the enzyme inhibition. Okay, now there are two types of enzyme inhibition. One is competitive inhibition and one other one is non-competitive inhibition. On the screen here, you are all able to see here. In the graph, you are able to see like two graphs. One is a black colored one, another one is a red colored one. And the black colored one is without the inhibitor and the red colored one is with the inhibitor. Sorry, I think I told you the opposite here. Remember, so the red colored one is like without the inhibitor there and the black colored one will be with the inhibitor. And now, my dear friends, what is going to happen in competitive inhibition and non-competitive inhibition? The first graph here is representing the competitive inhibition. In competitive inhibition, what is going to happen is, you are going to draw a graph once like without the inhibitor first, then with adding the inhibitor. Okay, now, so kya hoga? In this competitive inhibitor, inhibition, Vmax value, you can clearly see it is remaining the same. Vmax value same for both the graph. It is having the same Vmax value. But you can clearly see the Km value will be actually increasing when you add the competitive inhibitor. That black colored graph is with the inhibitor. Is it okay? So Km value will increase. So Vmax remains same and the Km increases. Vmax same and the Km increases. Competitive inhibition was given in the June exam also. So it is one of the hot favorite topic of your examiner. You have to have to remember this for sure. And in non-competitive inhibition, exactly opposite of that will be taking place, guys. In non-competitive inhibition, exactly opposite of that one. Okay. So in this, what will happen? Km value will remain the same. You can see the same Km value for both the graphs. You know? But whereas the V max value will actually decrease. I told you exactly opposite of that. That is why uh, I always advise the students to remember any one of that. Any one of that. So I, I request all of you to please remember better the competitive inhibition and you can make the exactly opposite of that in the non-competitive inhibition. Is it okay? So competitive inhibition mein kya hota hai? Vmax will remain the same and the Km. Okay. So competition mein kya karna padta hai? When you are doing the competition, kaise yaad rakhe? How to remember sir? Sir, isko yaad kaise rakhe? So during competition, what will happen? To maintain the same success, same velocity, kaam jyada karna padta hai. You have to do more work. So, calm zyada karna padta hai to maintain the same velocity. That is happening in the competitive inhibition. Understand your point here? So, remember, somehow, competitive and non-competitive inhibition. Is it okay? So, I already told you about the enzyme inhibition. There will be of two types, sir. reversible, irreversible. And irreversible will be again of two types, the competitive and the non-competitive. And in the competitive inhibition, what is going to happen? Vmax will remain the same, whereas the Km value will actually increase. Whereas in non-competitive, what is going to happen? The Km value will remain the same. Whereas V max value will decrease. This is what they will be asking you in your exam. Take care about that. Okay, <clears throat> fine. So that is what I want you to remember in the enzymes topic, guys. I think remaining things you can easily handle, like what is the nature of enzyme, it will be protein in nature and all those things. Okay. Lakshmi is telling here, sir, please teach entirely in English. Lakshmi, I'm teaching entirely in English only. Only that mnemonic I told you how to remember that in you know, like a small way to remember that in like Hindi. Kunchum, kunchum, Hindi lo Okay, that that is just a mnemonic. I can't translate that in some other language. Okay, I hope we can manage with that. <coughs> Chaliye, sir. Next one. Now the next topic that we are going to learn is molecular biology. Actually, molecular biology is a big big topic, sir. It's a big big topic where you'll be learning about all that you know, uh, replication, transcription, translation, and all those things you'll be learning. But in that, I'll tell you like what are the high yield topics that you must know, you must learn, and go to the exams. Is it okay? <clears throat> yes. So let's see the first topic that you have to learn here. Definite question in your January exam. What is attached at the three dash end of mRNA after transcription? First of all, I'll just take you to a little bit, little bit back here, sir. <clears throat> when you're learning about like you know formation of protein, protein synthesis, when you learn about protein synthesis, it starts from DNA. 
and first of all from the dna there will be formation of hn rna heteronuclear rna and this is known as transcription is it okay and after that this hn rna will undergo a certain modification and it is going to become your actual mrna and because it is undergoing some modification that is why it is known as post transcriptional after transcription modification and first thing i want you all to remember that both of them are taking place inside the nucleus only and after the formation of this mrna that mrna will actually come out into the cytoplasm okay and this mrna will actually help in the formation of protein and this is known as translation and after the translation this protein will undergo certain modification and that is post translational modification this is post translational modification so this clarity first of all you should have in your mind dna to hn rna will be transcription hn rna to mrna will be post transcription modification then mrna to protein will be translation and then protein will undergo modification now i am speaking about this one here so post transcriptional modification you can expect a definite question in your exams now first of all man lo ke this is your hn rna just imagine this is your hn rna now in hn rna it will be from 5 dash to 3 dash now three modifications number one modification at 5 dash end you consider 5 dash end to be your like head 3 dash end is like a tail and in the middle you are having the body so on head what are you going to weigh on the head aap head par kya pehnoge cap so that is why remember this is known as phi dash capping phi dash capping means what sir we are going to attach a substance here known as 7 methyl guanosine come on recall this name now repeat the name now in your mind wherever you are sitting wherever you are sitting in any corner of the world come on phi dash capping what are we going to attach 7 methyl guanosine this has been asked like many many times in this 7 methyl guanosine Now at three dash end you are going to attach a long tail of adenine, 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 adenine here. That is the reason why it is known as poly A tail. So what is this modification known as poly A tail? And in the middle, what are you going to do? The third modification that is splicing. And splicing untainted. What is the meaning of splicing, sir? We are going to remove the intron and ligate the exons. in the middle middle you will be having some parts known as introns and introns are non functional they are so remove the intron and then ligate the exons so removal of intron ligation of exon that is known as splicing and this splicing is done by enzyme known as spliceosomes you have to remember the name of this enzyme spliceosome and not only that another name of this one will be snrnps small nuclear ribonucleoproteins and they are also known as what's a snrfs so spliceosomes or snrnps or snrfs they are the one which are going to do what splicing and what is the meaning of splicing a removal of intron ligation of exon that is nothing but splicing so and at 5 dash end you'll be doing 5 dash capping 5 dash capping is nothing but we are going to attach a substance known as 7 methyl guanosine and at 3 dash end we are going to attach a long chain of adenine that is poly a tail just remember these three points you are done one question will definitely come in exams post transcriptional modification i repeat again the post transcriptional modification how many points will answer three points phi dash and phi dash capping three dash and poly a tail and in the middle you are going to do the splicing done next one so let us just go back to that question here sir what is attached at the three dash end of mrna after transcription three dash end yes there is poly a tail this is the modification okay aage badhte hain sir protein folding is done by dekho yaar actually kya hota hai after the formation of protein from dna to mrna mrna to finally protein now protein it depends on two things sir whether it is a good one or a bad one i mean to say whether it is a defect in that or there is no defect in that. if there is no defect in that if it is a perfect protein that protein will be folded and that protein is folded by chaperons already asked in your mc exam protein folding is done by what guys chaperons protein folding is done by chaperons is it okay and please yes doctors i think the students who have attended my regular classes they know very well okay, i am also particular about english so don't call it as like chaperon chaperon not chaperon chaperon it's chaperons okay so protein folding is done by chaperons 
Next one. All are true for genetic code except what? <clears throat> Remember, genetic code, it is also known as codon. Okay. Codon is very important topic nowadays. Okay. I am repeatedly asking in the middle, middle, sir. I hope you are writing that <clears throat> on some paper or you are marking in your notebooks there. What are the points to be learned? Codon is very much important. Now, in the codon, everyone remember one. You know very well what is the definition of codon? It is a combination of three nucleotides. In total, you will be having how many codons? 64 codons. In that, first, you have to remember the, for example, if this is your mRNA, messenger RNA, 5 dash, 10 to 3 dash. What is the start codon? Always the start codon will be A, U, G. It is also known as initiation codon or start codon. And what will be the termination codon? U, A, A or U, A, G or U, G. And just now I told you, UG is coding for 21st amino acid, UAG is coding for 22nd amino acid. Then, after that, the most important thing is the properties of codon. Codon has got certain characteristic properties. Number one, a codon will be universal. Yes, it is correct. True. What is the meaning of universal? Same codon will code for same amino acid in all species. Not only in human beings like you and me, in all species, the same codon will code for the same amino acid. Number two, the second thing is in between the codons, you cannot use any punctuation marks. It is commaless and commaless and remember, it is non overlapping. That is the second property, that is true. Third property, remember, a codon will code for a particular amino acid only. For example, I will give you one example AUG. AUG will always, always code for only one amino acid, that is methionine. AUG will always code for methionine. It will never ever change that amino acid. Okay. It is specific to that particular amino acid. So, therefore, this property is known as specificity. Specificity and specificity, simple English, you know that very well. It is unambiguous. Specificity is also known as what, sir? Unambiguous. Is it okay? So, therefore, this third option is actually wrong. It is not ambiguous, it is unambiguous. But opposite, <laughs> in opposite, yes. <laughs> I think Dr. Medicine remember my example I have given in the class. Okay. But as an opposite, you can see in total how many codons do we have? Sir? In total 64 codons. But how many amino acids do we have? Sir? There are totally like 20 amino acids. So if you see the YC versa, one amino acid approximately it's coded by like three codons. Approximately it will be having like three codons. So more than one codon. So every amino acid will be having more than one codon coding for that one. And that is known as degenerates. Degenerate. Understanding? So, what are the four properties? Tell me again, guys. Number one, universal. Number two, commonless and uh, non overlapping. Number three, specificity and unambiguous. And number four, bit region. So, you have to remember this, you know, properties here for the code. So all the properties, uh, all the points regarding this topic is completed. We have to learn this topic in molecular knowledge. Next one, another thing is about the Chargaff rule. Chargaff rule, the sub -copen. We have been learning about the Chargaff rule from school. But in your exam, they are giving, yes, <clears throat> in, in the exam, they are giving what's the, the problems, okay. Dr. Vairam, Ramanathan Vairam, last point again, sir. Last point is degenerate, uh, Ramanathan. Degenerate in, in the sense, see, we are having 64 codons, no? codons are more. Amino acids are actually less, 20 amino acids. So, remember, yeah, each and every amino acid will be coded by more than one codon common sense just remember with numbers the best way to remember is remember with the numbers there each and every amino acid will be having more than one codon so therefore that property is known as degenerate property is it okay ramanathan that is known as degenerate is it okay Chuck, but things. now they are giving problems like this if the content of adenine is 15 percent then what is the amount of guanine in dna according to chargaff rule see i hope you people have learned chargaff rule a lot of time Chargaff rule says that adenine always loves to bind with thymine, guanine always loves to bind with cytosine. There is no need of any formula, no need of any big big calculation. I have seen in certain books they are giving like big big formula or something like that. Nothing required. Kuch nahi chahi is. ATGC. Sab ko pata. Everyone knows. Now what is given in the question here? Adenine is 15%. If adenine is 15%, definitely thymine will also be 15%. So, 15 plus 15 will be how much, guys? 30%. If this is 30%, automatically the other two should be 70%. Why? Because I want my DNA to be 100% perfect. Yeah, no? 
So therefore, this will be 35% here. This will be 35% here. So what is asked in the exam? Gone in and gone in will be 35%. So that, that's how. That's like simple calculation. <clears throat> okay, now. Huh. So axomia dog bapre. It's not difficult, difficult names by <clears throat> axomia dog chargaf rule. Yes, I have written the chargaf rule. A denying loves to bind with thymine, gone in loves to bind with sacrosine. Yes, yes, doc. I hope you all know about the purines and pyrimidine. Purine will be adenine and guanine. Pyrimidine will be cytosine and thymine. But remember, adenine always binds with thymine double bond and guanine always binds with cytosine with a triple bond. Is it okay, doc? I am not able to tell your name again. Axomia. Axomia, doc. Thank you. So just some difficult name like this for me also. Nowadays, I will also try to keep some new name. You know? So these are all the things that I want you to at least revise in your molecular biology parts. Now coming to the next topic, nucleotide metabolism. Nowadays it is a trending topic. Sir. 2019, 2020, 2021. Okay, all these three years they have been continuously asking these questions from you. Is it okay, Doc? Yes. <clears throat> nucleotide metabolism. One question for sure. I don't know whether you are writing or not, my dear friends. Enzymes topic one question pakka aega. First topic electron transport chain one question pakka aega. Okay na. Proteins topic I told you definitely definitely two to three questions will come from there. Even clinical questions will come. Is it okay? So now welcome here nucleotide metabolism sir. Pakka pakka definitely one question from here. Okay. I'll tell you what they will ask. Now first thing is <clears throat> when you learn about the purine when you learn <clears throat> about the purine Synthesis of purine, there are two methods. One is de novo synthesis, another one is salvage part. Now, in our rapid revision class, not going in depth, if you go back and check our regular, you know, regular classes in, in our regular notes and all, in this, uh, you know, remember, a salvage pathway, in salvage pathway, there is an enzyme known as HGPRT. HGPRT, hypoxanthine guanine phosphoribosyl transferase. I tell you little bit slowly here. Please don't only remember the short form. I want you to remember full form. Last year in your FMG exam, they have given the full form of this one, HGPRT. Why? Because in the regular classes, most of the students will be having the habit of remembering only HGPRT, HGPRT, HGPRT. HGPRT, there is nothing but hypoxanthine, guanine, phosphoribosyl transferase. And if this enzyme is deficient, if this enzyme is deficient, it will lead to lesh. Nihan syndrome. What is that one? Lesh Nihan syndrome. Okay. And now, Lesh Nihan syndrome, what are the clinical features of that? Number one, the person will be suffering with gout. Okay. And you people know gout very well. Gout is nothing but hyperuricemia, increased in uric acid level. But my dear doctors, remember here, so all my dear doctors, remember here, will the patient come to you and tell you that Dr. Saab, Dr. Saab, I am feeling like uric acid is increased in my body. Nah. Nah. Hyperuricemia, okay. For studying theoretically, it's very good. Writing in the notebook, very good. Hyperuricemia, hyperuricemia, uric acid level increases. But how will the patient come and tell you that uric acid will go and get deposited in the form of urate crystal? I hope you people have learned in pathway and medicine. MSU crystal, monosodium urate crystal. And once that crystals will go and get deposited in the joints, there will be inflammation in the joint. Inflammation in the joint is known as arthritis. And this is due to gout, gouty arthritis. Uh -huh. So, uh -huh. Understanding here? So, gouty arthritis will occur. There will be joint pain. So, number one thing is joint pain. They can be a clinical question. So, in the clinical question, they can mention number one, gout, joint pain. The patient comes to you and complain about joint pain. Second thing will be the patient will be like having neurological disorder, mentally retarded, neurologically disturbed. Okay. Next, third thing and the most important thing is self-mutilation. These are the three things you have to remember for lesh nihan syndrome. There will be self-mutilation. Mutilation, harming. Harming our own self. Self-mutilation. And how the person will be doing that self-mutilation? Yes, these people will be like literally chewing their fingers. All their fingers will be damaged. It will be bleeding from here. Okay. And then literally chewing their lips. And then what is going to happen? They will be bleeding from here. So self-mutilation. <clears throat> yes. 
सेल्फ म्यूटिलेशन विल बी इंपॉर्टेंट कार्ड इन द एग्जाम तो नंबर वन जॉइंट पेन नंबर टू मेंटल टार्डेशन नंबर थ्री दर बी सेल्फ म्यूटिलेशन दैट्स लेश निहान सिंड्रोम एंजाइम डिफिशियंसी विल बी हाइपोजेंटिन गोनाइन फास्फोराइबोजाइल ट्रांसफरेज ए जीपीआरटी यस आगे बढ़ते हैं सर so this is what i want you to remember for your you know nucleotide metabolism number one that is about the salvage part you see there's a purine and yes i hope every student remember they are giving this question on a repeat mode degradation of purine when purines will undergo degradation sir for example like your amp adenosine monophosphate and then guanosine monophosphate and then uh the inosine monophosphate even a minor purine also guys adenosine monophosphate guanosine monophosphate and inosine monophosphate when all of them will undergo degradation actually i don't want to teach you now the entire pathway just remember finally it will lead to the formation of hypoxanthine and that is going to form what sir xanthine and that is going to form what guys uric acid i want all of you to be alert now i don't know how much alert you are it's almost like 1 and 1/2 hour One hour, thirty minutes completed here. Are you all still alive? Hello. <clears throat> Are you all still alive? Breathing. Can't let it also. Take it, huh? Huh. So purines will undergo degradation to form uric acid. And now I am why? Why I'm asking you if you're alive or not? In class, everyone will say yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is uric acid. I don't know why in the exam everyone will go and mark urea. That is not urea. Uric acid. Uric acid. so all the purines will undergo degradation to form what sir uric acid uric acid form it and here the name of the enzyme you remember it is xanthine oxidase the name of the enzyme here xanthine oxidase oh ho agar ye uric acid level bad jayega hyperuricemia that will lead to what sir gout and in gout my dear friends remember What is the drug that will be using? Allopurinol. Now I'm not going in the detail of that acute gout, chronic gout, maintenance, these and all. All you people have learned that in the pharmacology. Pharmacology, me, you have studied. Allopurinol. What is the mechanism of action? It is going to inhibit this enzyme. Which enzyme? Xanthine oxidase. All this question has been asked multiple times in the last two three years. So please remember this one, guys. Is it okay? So end product of purine will be uric acid. Okay. at least i am trying what a good name so at least i am trying <coughs> the end product of you know purine metabolism will be uric acid uric acid form hota hai and then remember xanthine oxidase will be inhibited by allopurinol allopurinol yeah that's it is it okay chaliye aage badhte hain sir so this is what i want you to remember in the nucleotide metabolism topic one mark will come from this pakka one you remember about leishnihan syndrome another thing you remember about the gout that is uric acid and now welcome to the easy topic that is carbohydrate i hope you people are trying to understand my planning here why did i keep this topic at last here sir like carbohydrates and lipids and all i just completed all the important topics first of all and the difficult one proteins done electron transport chain done enzymes done nucleotide metabolism done molecular biology done so all that part i have observed that students will be having little bit difficulty now carbohydrate metabolism i kept it at last why because my students knows that very well from school days glycolysis gluconeogenesis prep cycle ye to apne ko bachpan se pata samajh mein aa raha hai sir meri planning are you understanding your planning here everything is like well planned the same point here sir so now please welcome to the carbohydrates topic ha ah. in the carbohydrates topic sir a big clinical question is given here yes my dear friends a newborn baby refuses the breast milk since the second day of the birth whenever examiner is using the word as milk already i hope it is coming in your mind we are actually going to discuss about lactose and lactose will get digested to form one molecule of glucose and one molecule of fat ye aapke mind mein aa jana chahiye they should come in your mind <coughs> it is avoiding baby is refusing and vomits on force feeding but accept glucose acha there is no problem with glucose accept glucose no problem with the glucose there develops diarrhea on the third day by fifth day she is jaundiced with the liver enlargement eyes shows cataract that is the the key word that you have to catch okay eyes is showing cataract oh ho when it will occur glucose to no problem 
जब गैलेक्टोज का लेवल बढ़ता है गैलेक्टोसीमिया लेटस कोरिलेट अवर बायोकेमिस्ट्री विद ऑप्थलमोलॉजी गैलेक्टोसीमिया विल लीड टू ऑयल ड्रॉप कैटरैक्ट इट विल लीड टू ऑयल ड्रॉप कैटरैक्ट दैट इज व्हाट द एग्जामिनर इज ट्राइंग टू टेल यू एंड इन गैलेक्टोसीमिया व्हाट इज द एंजाइम व्हिच विल बी डिफिशिएंट गैलेक्टोस 1 फॉस्फेट यूरिडाइल ट्रांसफरेज रिमेंबर गैल पुट कैसे याद रखोगे ऑल माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स हाउ यू आर गोइंग टू रिमेंबर गैल पुट गैलेक्टोस 1 फॉस्फेट यूरिडाइल ट्रांसफरेज ओके so don't fear with that big clinical question they will be keyword in the middle try to catch that a baby boy 10th month old comes with vomiting severe jaundice and then hepatomegaly and the features of irritability on starting waning with fruit juice oh ho whenever the examiner is using the word as fruit juice that means we are going to give the baby sucrose and sucrose will get digested to form one molecule of glucose and molecule of fructose okay and now when there is like vomiting jaundice and all these things there is some problem with the fructose metabolism and fructose is not being tolerated with by the baby that is nothing but the case of fructose intolerance and when there is fructose intolerance the enzyme deficient will be aldolase b aldolase b guys okay now fructose intolerance so i want you to remember these two diseases here galactosemia galput and then fructose intolerance aldolase b now welcome to your favorite topic okay in this big discussion somewhere in the middle a thoda sa relief glycolysis our favorite topic so the first point that you have to remember is glycolysis is also known as emden meyerhoff pathway emp in the classes i have seen many students don't know the full form emden meyerhoff pathway what is the location of glycolysis it will take place in the cytosol what is the rate limiting enzyme pfk1 phosphofructokinase1 phosphofructokinase1 is the rate limiting enzyme irreversible reactions yes three irreversible reactions are there how to remember hkgk the first reaction the first step in glycolysis and then pfk1 that is the rate limiting step of glycolysis and then the last step that is a pyruvate kinase step okay so the first step and the last step and the rate limiting step these three will be the irreversible reactions of glycolysis hkgk pfk1 and pk this are irreversible What is the net gain of ATP in glycolysis? Yes, if it is aerobic, you'll be getting seven ATP. If it is anaerobic, you'll be getting only two ATPs. And do you have any inhibitor of glycolysis? Of course, remember fluoride. And fluoride is going to inhibit which enzyme of glycolysis? Sir, enolates. And remember, in your exam, they will never give you fluoride. They'll be giving you in the giving you in the form of NaF. And please concentrate on sodium fluoride. Fluoride is fluoride will part. Okay, now. So, thoda sa yahan se answer from now onwards will go a little bit faster. But because this is like carbohydrate, you have been learning from school. <clears throat> okay, so these are like you know, <clears throat> tack tack tack, like one by one, all the points that you have to learn in the glycolysis. Okay, next one. <clears throat> all of the following are the rate limiting enzymes except one. See, in your exam, in your exam, the first type of question that they'll be asking in the carbohydrate topic is. whatever pathways you are having now all the pathways they'll ask you either the location of the pathway or the rate limiting so first let us concentrate on that one so all the pathways of carbohydrate metabolism they'll ask you either the location or they'll be asking the rate limiting enzymes okay so let us see one by one just now i told you glycolysis also known as emden meyer of pathway kahan hota hai cytoplasm mein hota hai phosphofructokinase one is the rate limiting second thing and the most famous one krebs cycle also known as tca cycle also known as citric cycle what is the full form of tca sir tri carboxylic acid cycle tri carboxylic acid cycle and it is taking place in mitochondrial matrix okay na? everyone knows krebs cycle will take place in the mitochondrial matrix and the rate limiting enzyme will be isocitrate dehydrogenase that is idh isocitrate dehydrogenase is the rate limiting enzyme okay again and here itself remember what is the net gain of atp i'm just adding the points here guys What is the net gain of ATP in Krebs cycle? There will be totally ten ATPs obtained in the Krebs. Okay, so you are done with the name, you are done with the location of the Krebs cycle, then you are done with the net gain of ATP, and then rate limiting enzyme. So so many points are completed. Now, if you just want to add one more thing here, you can just add there. What are the vitamins which are required in Krebs cycle? Remember the vitamin B one, vitamin B two, vitamin B three, vitamin B five. These are the vitamins which are required in Krebs cycle. That is another question. So if you remember these points about the Krebs cycle, it is done. Okay, now I'm starting. 
Understanding my point here, sir? What do you mean B1, B2, B3, and B5? Correct. So after that, now what is the meaning of gluconeogenesis? First, remember the definition. Gluconeogenesis means formation of glucose from non-carbohydrate sources. Formation of glucose from non-carbohydrate sources. Gluconeogenesis. Where it will take place? Two organs. One is your liver, another one is kidney. Every student remember liver, sir. 90% of gluconeogenesis in the liver. 10% will also occur in kidney. Remember kidney. And both in cytosol as well as mitochondria. Not like only cytosol or mitochondria. Both in cytoplasm as well as mitochondria. Is it okay? And then what is the rate limiting enzyme here in gluconeogenesis? Fructose 1, 6 bisphosphate. Don't worry, I'll tell you a little bit in detail about this one also. Gluconeogenesis ke baare mein mein aapko detail mein bataun. After learning these three pathways, their location and rate limiting enzyme, welcome to glycogen. Formation of glycogen, glycogenesis. Breakdown of glycogen, glycogenolysis. Okay, I hope all of you are following this one here guys. Just give me a thumbs up in the chat box there. I hope everyone is following this one. Or should I go a little bit slowly? I hope it is perfect, right? Yes. Uh, carbohydrate metabolism, I have seen like most of the students will be having a little bit of confidence in that one. This is why I am going to go like Dr. Xavier, uh, Xavier is asking there, sir, PDF will get Yes, of course. Yes, of course, Xavier. You will surely get the PDF. Yes, all the doctors over there, you will be getting the PDF. I hope all the students knows very, very well. Yes. I am actually, I have already prepared an LMR, last minute revision for your biochem LMR. It's hardly like 3 to 5 pages. Okay. I'll be giving you the updated LMR. I'll be giving you the updated LMR for this 2022 session, next session. Okay. Now. So that will be like hardly 5 pages, 5 pages only. Sir. 5 pages in the sense, it is not like double sided also, only single sided 5 pages. In that 5 pages, you know. You'll be getting the entire, entire, whatever we are discussing here in a very, very, very concise man. Better you can take a printout of that five pages and stick wherever you're studying, sir. Up to your 20 January, just daily give a look for five minutes. All that five pages, five, ten minutes, you just give it a look, sir. Before going to the bed, take but daily. Because biochemistry, pharmacology, you know, uh, microbiology, PSM, all this will be like very volatile subject. We'll be like forgetting a lot, you know, all these names of the internet. Better you make a habit. You promise karo ge, make a habit that that five pages you are going to just give it a glance. Every every now and then you're going to give it a glance. So my ah, So yes. Yes, yes. yes. I, I'll, I'll share with you people. Don't worry. Uh, yes, on my telegram group, I'll share. Don't worry, sir. <laughs> lovely, lovely finally. Yeah. Ah, okay. So that, that LMR, I'll, I'll actually share on my, you know, a telegram group or after the class, I'll share with you people, guys. Don't worry. I'm with you all. Okay, now. <clears throat> Shall we? Hmm. So now I was telling about the glycogen. Glycogen formation is glycogenesis and glycogen breakdown will be what's a glycogenolysis. Glycogenesis, formation of glycogen, glycogenolysis, breakdown of glycogen. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to tell you a method. I'll tell you one simple method. You don't need to mug up at all. Just tell me one thing here. Glycogen is a storage form of glucose. We have been learning from school days. It is a storage form of glucose. But where it is stored? Students have never thought about that one. Glycogen is a storage form of glucose. Glycogen is a storage form of glucose. But store kaha hota hai? Where that glycogen will be stored? Remember, it will be stored in the liver and skeletal muscle. If it is stored in the liver and skeletal muscle, there only it will be forming, there only it will be breaking. Only it will be forming, there only it will be breaking, understood, that's all, okay, simple, no need to mug up that one again and again, you know? so, so many students are just keeping their biochemistry book in the front and they are just mugging up, liver, liver, skeletal muscle, skeletal muscle, achanak se message aata hai, tongue, how are you baby, baby is gone, khatam, so these kind of distractions are there in life, make with your life simple, glycogen is stored, but where, liver and skeletal muscle, wahi to form hoga, aur wahi to break hoga, akkad ne form out on the, akkad ne break out. Glycogenesis, glycogenolysis. Now, what is the rate limiting enzyme? Glycogenesis, forming, forming synthase, forming synthase. Okay. So, therefore, glycogen synthase. And glycogenolysis breakdown, remember, glycogen phosphorylase. And now, welcome to the last and final, last and final thing, sir. HMP shunt, also known as the pentose phosphate factor. 
exos monophosphate chain or pentose phosphate pathway it is taking place in cytosol and remember the very very famous enzyme that you have been learning in every subject you know patho internal medicine microbiology g6pd deficiency and all so g6pd comes here sir like put glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase okay glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase and now one more thing important here what is the net gain of atp in hm fission zero even that is also asked in the exam net gain of atp in hm fission will be zero so in this one table what i am trying to tell is all the pathways all the pathways of carbohydrate metabolism we are done with the location we are done with the rate limiting and with the location we are done with the rate limiting enzymes that's it understanding sir thoda sa effort lagana hai it is like little bit effort biochemistry is not a very vast subject is not a very big subject when it comes to your mci exam i'm telling you you have to study like little bit about the biochemistry and my dear friends i'm telling you 17 marks from biochemistry free 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 understanding thoda sa effort little bit effort i'll give you the lmr five pages aapko bas rozana you know 10 minutes you have to just see that before going to sleep sir make it a habit make it a protocol in your life sone se pehle 10 minute main ek baar uska lmr dekhunga khat jan 17 marks will be there in your book understanding my point here so please my dear friends don't don't leave this subject at all uh, fearing with you know listening from other friends or all this difficult kuch difficult nahi hai sir thoda sa thoda sa effort and it will be done guys theek hai na dhruv uh, dhruv is asking that yes sir please add vitamins to in the lmr yes sure 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 i will try to even add the vitamins topic in here no problem now what is the key enzymes of gluconeogenesis ha main aapko bata raha tha na gluconeogenesis gluconeogenesis means formation of glucose from non carbohydrate sources so what we'll do is we'll normally learn the formation of glucose from pyruvate so from pyruvate we are going to form the glucose but i told you it is irreversible how many re reversible reactions are there sir three irreversible reactions are there hk gk pfk1 and pk these three are irreversible and we are going to reverse so pyruvate to pep you remember one enzyme here that is pyruvate carboxylase my dear doctors only three points you have to remember in gluconeogenesis gluconeogenesis only three points theek hai na pyruvate carboxylase enzyme requires biotin as a coenzyme number one point fructose 1,6 bisphosphate to you know fructose 6 phosphate yaar oh oh this is so easy this is so easy just you yourself just think about that name now fructose means how many carbons will you have 1 2 3 4 5 6 there is a phosphate group attached on the first carbon and there is a phosphate group attached onto the sixth carbon fructose 1,6 bisphosphate fructose 1,6 bisphosphate what we have to do here remove the phosphate group from the first carbon and whenever you remove the phosphate group or whenever you break down anything in chemistry aapko just lagana hoga a what will be adding there sir a breakdown of lipid lipase breakdown of protein protease breakdown of sucrose sucrase similarly breakdown of the phosphate group phosphatase so it is fructose 1,6 this phosphatase just add a okay and glucose 6 phosphate is going to convert to glucose so just add a glucose 6 phosphate understanding here it's so simple so gluconeogenesis formation of glucose from non carbohydrate source as a student i am going to remember just three points point number 1 pyruvate carboxylase why do i have to remember coenzyme which coenzyme pyru fructose 1,6 bisphosphatase is the rate limiting enzyme definitely you have to remember it is the rate limiting enzyme and then third thing here gluconeogenesis kahan hota hai just now i told you gluconeogenesis will occur only at two places sir liver and kidney will it occur in skeletal muscle no i have not mentioned that in the table here just remember it's not going to take place in the skeletal understanding gluconeogenesis will occur only in the liver and kidney not in the skeletal muscle maine wahan nahi likha hai matlab nahi hoga understanding the point here but it is not like that it's not like that in the exam they ask you what is the reason why it is not taking place in the skeletal muscle yes this enzyme will be absent guys i am telling absent sir absent i am not telling deficient hello please be very careful 
I told absent, it's not deficient. Naturally, naturally, normally in human beings like you and me, in your muscle and in my muscles, right now, we don't have that glucose 6-phosphatase. It is absent. That is why I'm just, I'm shouting that from that time, because of this thing only, all the three points are like three potential questions in gluconeogenesis. Okay. So, therefore, <clears throat> Pyruvate carboxylase, what is the coenzyme required, sir? Biotin. Fructose 1,6 bisphosphatase is the rate limiting enzyme. And glucose 6 phosphatase will be absent in the skeletal muscle. These three points you have to remember in gluconeogenesis. That's all. That's all you have to remember. Sir. Now, welcome back here. What are the key enzymes of gluconeogenesis? Except pyruvate carboxylase, yes. Phosphofructokinase, no. Fructose 2,6 bisphosphatase, sorry. All, all of the following are the key enzymes of gluconeogenesis except one. Glucose 6 phosphatase, yes. Sir. Understanding here? So, uh, my dear friends, remember these three enzymes are the key enzymes of gluconeogenesis here. Are you getting a point here? Perfect. So, gluconeogenesis, I have three points. Just remember these three points more than one. Next one. De novo synthesis of fatty acid requires which coenzyme? Mm -hmm. De novo synthesis of fatty acid requires which coenzyme? This question is actually from your HMP shunt. HMP shunt is also known as PP pathway. I request all my dear students with folded hands here, no need to learn HMP shunt pathway. HMP shunt ka complete pathway, padne ka zarurat nahi hai. No need to learn HMP shunt complete pathway. Only and only remember, there are two products obtained here. One product will be your NADPH. Another one will be the ribose 5 phosphate. NADPH and ribose 5 phosphate. Hello, my dear doctors. I can see some people are falling here and there. Hello, Dr. Praveen, Dr. Basi Daltaf. Yes, people are, people are falling here and there. Why is this called effective studies? This is what is effective studies. All the faculties throughout India, they'll be shouting behind you. Effective revision, you know, effective studies. We started our class somewhere around at 6 o'clock. Now, hard day is not even like 8 o'clock right now, just 2 hours. And 2 hours, I can see some people are falling there and falling here. Some people are sitting in the library and, you know, they are falling beside on the girl beside sitting there. Hello, control yourself. <clears throat> Concentrate here. Do ghente ki padai, important is it. Achha se padho yaha par, na? No falling here and there. HMP shunt, no need to learn the entire pathway. You have to just learn the two products. It's NADPH and ribose 5 phosphate. Okay, sir. You are telling to remember these two products, but why? What is the reason? What is the reason? Remember, ribose 5 phosphate is necessary for the formation of DNA and RNA. <clears throat> DNA and RNA. Okay, now. And then NADPH is the one which is going to form the fatty acid. It is helping in fatty acid synthesis. Just tell me one thing here. Fatty acid belongs to which category? Fatty acid belongs to carbohydrate, proteins or lipids. Remember, fatty acid belongs to lipids. So, fatty acid synthesis, yes, it is also helping in lipid synthesis. If lipid is forming, remember, cholesterol synthesis. And if cholesterol is forming, cholesterol is very much important for forming all the steroid harm. All the steroid hormones. Okay. So that is the reason why I, I, I actually tell all the students remember only one point here fatty acid synthesis. Fatty acid form or the lipid form over. Lipid is forming, cholesterol will form. If cholesterol is forming, pakka steroid hormones. So starting a point here. Then NADPH is also required inside the RBC. NADPH is also required inside the new. Okay, very much important, sir. HMP shunt, you have to remember these two important products here. NADPH and ribose 5 phosphate. The question is given in a very twisted manner. De novo synthesis of fatty acid. So, fatty acid synthesis requires which coenzyme? The coenzyme is NADPH. Please be careful with NADH. There is a lot of difference between NADH and NADPH. <coughs> yes, very good. Very good, Dr. Praveen. Very good, Priyanka. Very good, Raj. Very good, very good, Chaudhary. Chalo, aage hai, chalo. Enzyme deficiency seen in the Pompeii's disease. Oh, oh, how can you forget the glycogen storage diseases? Glycogen storage diseases. Okay. So, in this table, I am telling you about the glycogen storage diseases here, guys. 
तो यस व्हाट इज द टाइप 1 ग्लाइकोजन स्टोरेज डिजीज टाइप 1 ग्लाइकोजन स्टोरेज डिजीज फर्स्ट यू रिमेंबर द नेम डोंट लुक एट द एंटायर टेबल एट वंस फर्स्ट यू लुक एट द नेम्स टाइप 1 इज वन गिग डिजीज टाइप 2 विल बी पॉम्पेस डिजीज टाइप 3 विल बी कोरीज डिजीज टाइप 4 एंडरसन टाइप 5 मेकल टाइप 6 हर्ज डिजीज सो दिस इज द नेम्स फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू हैव टू रिमेंबर ओके ग्लाइकोजन स्टोरेज डिजीजेस माय डियर फ्रेंड्स very very much important for your exam pakka one question from here the exam or you know your question paper will not be completed without a question from this you can mark my words okay your paper will not be completed without a question from here understanding so type 1 will be the one gig type 2 will be pompins type 3 coris type 4 anderson type 5 mikhal type 6 hurst disease there is one very bad method to remember this one there is one very vulgar mnemonic okay how to remember the names first of all Remember type 1, WON, type 2, POMPES. POMPES, remember, pumped, and type 3, CORIS. WON, pumped, CORIS. Don't ask me who is WON, don't ask me who is CORI, and don't ask me what are they pumping. WON, pumped, CORI. And then type 4, it is AND, and type 5 is MECAL, MAKE, and type 6 will be first. And remember, after clearing your MCA exam, when you prepare for NEET PG, at that time, you'll also have to learn about type 7, that is TOROIS disease. And remember T for tired. Remember T for tired. Mm -hmm. Warn, pumped, Cory, and make her tired. Okay, that is a way to remember. Don't judge me with all these mnemonics and all. Okay, what is this Azam sir teaching here? Yes, it is a way how you remember this one. Warn, pumped, Cory, and make her tired. So, what is this? We will be remembering the names here. <laughs> Dr. Bharat is enjoying this. <laughs> okay. Uh, by this, we can remember the names. Now, once the names are done, now welcome to the enzymes. Okay. Enzyme, let us start from below here. Remember, type 6 Hertz disease, type 5 Mekal disease, both of them, the enzyme deficient will be glycogen phosphate, glycogen phosphate. But observe there very carefully. In Hertz disease, it is hepatic liver wala, and in Mekal disease, it is muscle glycogen phosphate deficient. So remember with the mnemonic as H for H, M for MC. Type 5, type 6, remember H for H, M for M. Good. Very nice. Then after that, the next one for these two diseases, you remember with the mnemonic as A, B, C, D. Anderson, branching enzyme will be deficient. Cori's, it will be D branching enzyme deficient. Anderson, branching, Cori's, D branching. Anderson, branching, Cori's, D branching. And after that, one gig disease is actually the enzyme deficient will be glucose 6-phosphatase. Every student knows this one here. And remember my dear friend, this is totally different. Pompase disease will be totally different. Why? Because it is the enzyme present inside the lysosomes. Lysosomes, the suicidal bags of the cells. Acid maltase and acid maltase also known as the lysosomal glucose. You can remember the name of the enzyme also very much easily with this one. Here. Is it okay? So remember the five, fifth and sixth one will H for H, M for M, and third and fourth remember as A, B, C, D, and then first one everyone knows that glucose 6 phosphatase enzyme is deficient, and then pompase disease totally different one. It is the one which will be actually present in lysosome. Enzyme deficient will be acid maltase. Acid maltase. Okay. Chaliye sir. Aage badte hain. Thank you, thank you, Bharat. Next one, sir. The next topic we are going to go ahead with the lipids topics. Lipid is the simplest topic. Okay. First of all, my dear friends, remember everyone, lipid, the moment you listen the word as lipid, remember two things, it is made up of fatty acid along with glycerol. Lipid is made up of two things, sir, fatty acid and glycerol. And in this, you actually have to worry only about the fatty acid. Is it okay? Everyone along with me, with full energy here, guys, last, last, I would, uh, I would say that, you know, hardly another 10-15 minutes, guys, okay? So another 10-15 minutes, we are going to finish off the entire thing. Uh, so I hope you all have energies left out, some energy left out. And I know that you people are like very busy people. You know? So oh, I hope you have like 10 or 15 minutes to be spent along with me. Last 10-15 minutes, we are going to finish off. Guys. Are you getting me? Are you getting me? Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Dr. Saab, 10-15 minutes in your hmm. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure that you're allowing me to teach you people for another 10-15 minutes. Okay? It's my pleasure. <clears throat> so, 
the lipid will be made up of two things sir fatty acid and glycerol in fatty acid you have to remember the classification of fatty acid and there you have to remember essential fatty acids essential fatty acid you can expect the question from here there are three essential fatty acid number one linoleic acid number two there will be linolenic acid and number three there will be arachidonic acid arachidonic acid sir. so these three are the essential fatty acids sir. linoleic acid linolenic acid and arachidonic acid linoleic acid linolenic acid and arachidonic acid these three are the essential fatty acids okay question number one out of these three which is the most essential most essential will be linoleic acid and what else do you have to remember here sir you have to remember the nomenclature what is the nomenclature 18 is to 2 9 comma 12 sir what the hell that we have to understand from these numbers remember the first number is representing you number of carbons linoleic acid will have 18 carbons next number is representing you the number of double bonds how many double bonds are there two and when you know that there are two double bonds you should know where are they positioned what is the position? Position of what? Double bond. Don't take me wrongly. So remember, the two double bonds, one is located on the ninth carbon, another on the twelfth carbon. That is what you have to understand from this numbers. I repeat again. First number is representing the number of carbons. 18 carbons. And then how many double bonds are there? So two double bonds. And then where are they located? Ninth and twelfth carbon. Okay. And apart from this, I hope people have heard about that omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acid. How to decide that one, sir? Just do the first number minus the last number. Simple trick to remember. Don't get confused. Don't confuse yourself. First number minus the last number. 18 minus 12 will be 6. So this is omega 6. Oh, oh, oh simple trick. Okay. Linolenic acid, what is the nomenclature? 18 is to 3. 9, comma, 12, comma, 15. Radha mautunda ledameku. Are you all understanding? How many carbons are there? 18. How many double bonds? 3. Where are they located? 9, 12, 15. And then this one will be 20 is to 4. And then 5, comma 8, comma 11, comma 14 here. Sir. And now tell me, is it omega 3 or omega 6? Wow, very good. Somebody is writing there. The name itself is somebody. Somebody is writing there. <laughs> 18 minus 15 this is. So therefore 3. Omega 3. And 20 minus, you know, 4 here. This will be omega 6. Sir. I hope this classification has become easy for you right now. Essential fatty acid. And this is the information that I want you to remember. Next one. All are derived from cholesterol. Remember, cholesterol is the one. Cholesterol is the one which is going to form, number one, all the steroid hormones in our body. And it is also going to form the vitamin D in our body. And remember, the cholesterol is the one which is going to form the bile salts, bile acids and bile salts, not the bile pigment. Bile pigment will be the bilirubin and bilirubin will be formed from the heme, heme, sir. So, cholesterol is undergoing degradation to form three substances. Number one, all the steroid hormones. Don't take it easy because many of the students are thinking, oh, such a silly thing, by kaun padega? You know, nowadays it is the trend of something difficult. Are yaar. First of all, it's not the time to go into extreme things. Okay, I'll study only clinical question. First of all, your base has to be strong. So learn all these things perfectly. Then you go for the extreme things like clinical question, image-based question, and all those things. Simple question aap ke exam mein pucha diya. A simple question was asked in your MC exam. Steroid hormones are formed from where? Answer cholesterol. One mark. Understanding your point here? Steroid hormones are formed from where? Answer is cholesterol will be getting one mark. Sir. And remember, not only steroid hormones, even vitamin D is also synthesized from the cholesterol and even bile acids are formed from the cholesterol. I gave you the question to have a clarity. It's not bile pigments. It's not bile pigments. Is it okay? The next one now. <clears throat> Beta oxidation of fatty acid occurs in which organelle? Ab yahan suno sir, ye mein aapko kyun diya hai? Beta oxidation of fatty acid, it will be actually taking place in three stages. Okay. Number one stage will be activation. Of the fatty acid number two will be transport of that activated fatty acid by carnitine shuttle transport by carnitine shuttle okay 
and number three will be beta oxidation proper. Okay, make but dubara repeat karta ho. I repeat again here. Hello, my dear friends. Oi, hoi, thank you, thank you. Nescafe Milk. Nescafe Milk is writing there as aap must ho, sir. Thank you, thank you. Aap bhi bade must ho, sir. Mere ko coffee pine ka man kar raha hai. Nescafe. Haan, aisa lag raha hai ki I'm giving a commercial here. Haan. Beta oxidation of fatty acid will occur in three stages, sir. Number one will be activation of fatty acid. Number two will be transport. And number three will be beta oxidation proper. And now, remember, activation will be taking place in the cytosol. Activation will occur in cytosol. Whereas beta oxidation proper will take place in mitochondrial matrix. That's the reason why, what is the second step? Transport. Activation, cytoplasm mein hoga. Beta oxidation proper, mitochondria mein hoga. That is why we have to actually transport. Okay, ji. Done here. And remember, they are asking now the question, beta oxidation of fatty acid. All my dear FMG students, please be alert here. Please be alert here, sir. Seriously alert now. Students are thinking beta oxidation of fatty acid will take place both in cytoplasm as well as mitochondria. Wrong. If this type of question is given to you, your answer should be only mitochondria. Beta oxidation proper will take place in the mitochondria. Your answer should be only mitochondria, not cytoplasm. It should be only mitochondria. Is it okay? Shallow, sir. Gaucher's disease is due to deficiency of which enzyme? Please look at this table here. In this table, you are actually able to see the lipid storage diseases. Hello, my dear friends. There are totally six diseases present over here. And one question will definitely come from here. Sir. Okay. In your next FMG exam, one question will definitely come from the lipid storage diseases. And hello, my dear friend. Can't you learn like six points for me? Please, Paja Lusta. Okay, please, I'm requesting all of you guys, just one question will definitely come. You just have to learn like six points. Six points. Is it okay? So, Nyman Pick disease, what is the name of the enzyme deficient here? Sphingomyelinase. And I'm sure you people have learned this in pathology also. And, ah. and Gaucher's disease will occur due to gluco, glucocerebrosis. And Krabby's and Fabry's will occur due to Galacto and Galacto. Same one only, sir. Galactocerebrosidase only, but this is alpha and that is beta. So, what I will always do is Krabby's disease, I will be always writing like this beta. Krabby's disease, beta, galactocerebrosidase, and alpha, you remember like Fabry's, you know, like a ramming word, you remember alpha Fabry's, alpha Fabry's, and Krabby's, you remember that is beta. And yes, Tay Sachs, hot favorite of your MC examiner. Tay Sachs will occur due to deficiency of exosaminidase A, whereas Sandhoff's disease will occur due to deficiency of exosaminidase A and B. Okay, ne? Understanding your point here, sir? So, Nyman pick disease, six diseases, sir. Let us repeat again. Come on, sir. Loud and clearly. Last five minutes, we are going to finish off here. Everyone here, loud and clearly, wherever you are sitting, let the world know we have revised biochemistry now. We are ready for that. Is it okay? Nyman pick disease, sphingomyelinase deficiency. Yes, Gaucher's disease, beta glucocerebrosidase. It is glucocerebrosidase. Krabby's and Fabry's, both of them galacto. Fabry's alpha, Krabby's beta. And Tay Sachs disease, it is hexosaminidase A. And Sandoff disease, hexosaminidase A and B. Pakka, one question from here. And please, please remember six points. Only six points, one question from here. I think right from the beginning of our session at six o'clock, I think you are noting down everywhere, wherever I told you, definite question is going to come, sir. So please make a note of that and pakka vaha se sawal aayega. Okay, ji. Chalo. <clears throat> Aage badenge. Now, welcome to the last and final one. That is your vitamins topic here. And from vitamins topic, in your January exam, in your next FMG exam, I am expecting at least, at least three to four questions from you. Every student, every medical student, okay na? They will be having overconfidence with this topic. Achha, vitamins topic. Oh, we are studying from LKG, UKG. We know what are vitamins. Kya? Fat soluble, water soluble. Hey, na? A, D, E, K and then B, C. I mean to say uh, vitamin B and vitamin C. Understanding? So students will be just happy. Achha, me ko vitamins pata hai, Hello. Confidence, very good. No overconfidence. This is one topic you are going to study while going to the exam on the way. On the way while going to the exam in the morning of 20th January. 
So 20th Jan in the morning when you are going to the exam, at that time you are going to learn, revise this vital news topic once. Whatever Fadu student you are, whatever excellent student you are, but you are going to revise this before going to the exam. Is it okay? So <clears throat> here, like in our revision here, rapid revision here, I am not having like much to revise here, right? Vital news to pata hi hota hai aapko. So basically, I'll just tell you like few things which are very much important here. First of all, vitamin K is required for clotting factors. Remember which clotting factors? Liver is going to form the clotting factor, all the clotting factors. And clotting factor number 2, 7, 9, 10, you require which vitamins or vitamin K. But the biggest question here is why? Why? Because vitamin K is required for carboxylation. Gamma carboxylation. Carboxylation means what? Adding the carbon. But where you are going to add that? At glutamate. At glutamate. This is the golden word that you have to remember for your exam. Vitamin K is required for clotting factor number 2, 7, 9, 10. Okay. So, for carboxylation and glutamate. Vernike encephalopathy. Nowadays, trending question. I have just included in vitamins topic randomly few things which are important. You have to see and go to the exam. Wernicke encephalopathy is due to deficiency of vitamin B1. Vitamin B1 will be your thiamine. Thiamine deficiency is the Alcoholism. Alcoholism, you know, the most common cause for thiamine deficiency. It will lead to what? Wernicke encephalopathy. Students have been learning vitamin B1 deficiency very, very good. Very, very much prana. Again, it is a very old one now. That used to be out like almost like six, seven years back. Nowadays, it is like Wernicke encephalopathy okay all kinds next one biotin is acting like a cofactor for remember for biotin you have to remember like three enzymes just now i told you one enzyme abhi abhi aapko bataya tha. just now i told you one enzyme that is pyruvate carboxy where did i where did i told you about this enzyme so pyruvate carboxylase gluconeogenesis number two Number two, biotin is also required for propionyl CoA carboxylase. Propionyl CoA carboxylase. You can go back and check my notes. In my notes, it will be there in the vomit part. <clears throat> okay. And then the third one will be acetyl CoA carboxylase. And acetyl CoA carboxylase will be in fatty acid synthesis. So one is in glucose, uh, sorry, carbohydrate metabolism. Another one is in protein metabolism. Another one will be in the fat, lipid metabolism, fats metabolism. Okay. So there are three enzymes and these three enzymes require biotin. And that is why they have asked the question, biotin is required for which type of reaction? You can see there, it is required for carboxylase. Biotin is required for carboxylase. Achha, one more thing they are asking about, they are very much, you know, uh, like fascinated about this one here in your exam. They are asking a lot of questions regarding biotin. So one more thing is that, biotin deficiency is kya hota hai? Hair loss hota hai, alopecia hota hai. But they are not asking what has happened due to deficiency. They are asking in the exam that biotin deficiency is due to what? What is the most common cause? The most common cause is consumption of raw egg. Ah. Actually, eating egg, there are two methods. Either you can boil the egg or you can fry the egg. Some of the people, they don't like frying the egg. They don't like boiling the egg. They will take the egg, break the egg and just drink it. Yeah. So, in that, what will happen? That raw egg, kacha anda, kachi gudu. In that raw egg, what will happen? You'll be having egg white. And in that egg white, there will be a protein known as evidin. This was also asked in your MC exams. Evidin. And evidin will love to bind with the biotin and it will be taking it out. So, what is the most common cause of deficiency of biotin? Consumption of raw egg. All those new, new teenagers in the teen age, they'll be getting attracted by nowadays heroes and all. And six packs and all. They'll go to gym. And in the, in the gym, the trainer will tell, uh -huh, go back to home. And take egg and don't boil, don't fry, just drink it. Body to ban jati hai, but hair sare chale jati hai. So, I don't know about the body. If you continue the exercise, I don't know if your body is building or not. But pakka hair loss will be there. Isi le aapne dekha hoga, big big bodybuilders will be there, but there will be no hairs there. Understanding? So, hair loss pakka hota hai. So, biotin deficiency se. Is it okay? Yes. Okay. Someone is writing this, Johnny Sins. I don't know who is that. Now, next one, sir. This question has been repeated like two times, two times in your exams continuously. Last December exam also and last June exam also. December 2021 and June 2022. This question and this image was repeated. What is that one? That is Castle's necklace. 
and Kazel's necklace will be seeing in which one, sir? Pelagra. I hope all the student knows very well. Pelagra will be 3D disease. What is that 3D? D for dementia. Dementia, neurological disorder. D for dermatitis, inflammation of the skin, but only which is exposed to light. That is why you are able to see that necklace, Casus necklace. And D for diarrhea, dementia, dermatitis, and diarrhea. These three things will be yes, occurring in pelagra. Agar aapne isko treat nahi kiya, if you don't treat this one, then it will lead to fourth D, that is death. The fourth D will be death. But yes, remember Dr. Asif. It is if it is you if you don't treat that, agar aap usko treat nahi karoge, to death ho jaye. Is it okay? And this necklace will be the Kaz's necklace. Please keep that picture in your mind because they are asking the questions from here. Is it okay? Yes. So this topic is very much important, sir. Vitamins topic you have to study and go to the exam. Without this, please, please don't go to the exam. On the day of the exam, you have to revise. Is it okay, guys? So that was about our entire biochemistry, carbohydrate, proteins, lipid, enzyme. Nucleotide metabolism, molecular biology, you know, electron transport chain, every, every topic we have revised. And I hope you have written there what all you have to revise for your exams on a daily basis. Okay. So, my dear friends, at the end, let me just finish this. I'll be giving you LMR, LMR of five pages. I'll be giving you. Stick that on your, you know, wherever you're studying. And please revise that daily 10 minutes before going to the. That is very much important. Otherwise, everything will be gone from your mind. Okay. And you will be getting that on my Telegram group. I'll, I'll be sharing it on my Telegram group or I'll be sharing on my WhatsApp, sir. You can just WhatsApp me on this number. We'll be staying connected. Yes, till your exam. You know? uh, there, there are only like two places where I'm actually active there. One will be my Instagram, Anatomy Dr. Azum. This is my Insta handle and that is my WhatsApp, sir. So these are the two places where you can communicate and I am going to be along with you, my dear friends, till your exam. Okay. And yes, of course, just fi before finishing the session here, I will tell you one thing here, my dear friends. Please, please, I'm requesting all of you with the folded hands here. Please don't get laid back. Don't go into that, you know, comfort zone. They are two months. Yes, you have seen how the last six months got finished just like that. You people came back from your foreign universities after taking the degrees and all, you know. And then you people actually started studying, thinking that you're having six months. And in no time, with no time, you know, July, August, September, October, November, we are in November right now. And in November, when we are meeting like many of the students, they are like, sir, I did not do MCQs. Sir, I did not do this subject, that subject and all. So please, I'm requesting one of you, utilize this golden period. Think that, you know, you people are all like in a very dull mood always. Okay? Sir, we are stuck here, preparing for FMZ and all those things. My dear friends, you are actually lucky. You are lucky people that you got that two months extra. So please start practicing MCQs. Please, today itself, after completing our session today, today itself, take a white paper, write down all the 19 subjects, no influence of others. There should be no influence from other students. Why? Because what is difficult to my friend, it is not difficult to me. What is difficult to me is not difficult to my friend. It is different from person to person. Today itself, after my class, after my session here, sit down and on a white page, you write down there all the 19 subjects and without any, you know, bias, without any partiality to ourselves, mark. These are the difficult subjects. Whether it be 3, 4, 5 subjects, whatever it is, and write down there today itself, I am going to finish this in the first We are having 60 days time. In 60 days, first 30 days, or first 20 days itself, I am going to finish my difficulty. So difficult is done. Whatever is easy, you are already done. 100% of your preparation is ready and you are al already daily solving the MCQ. So please do this one. Don't be in a laid back mood and please help each other. FMG exam is just a screening exam. FMG exam is just, just a screening exam, sir. Don't, you don't have to worry about, you know, if I help, kisi ko help kiya, if I help any of my friend, he'll be getting like more marks or less marks. It's not about the ranking system here. It's just about clearing that 150 mark. So please help all your friends. Be positive. Create the positive energy around you. Please help your friend. If some of your friends, they are diverting from the track, ask them, counsel them, tell them, start studying. Let's start studying now. So if you start studying, like, you know, one topic, you'll get the confidence to study the next topic. Okay, now. So please try learning like this, guys. Help each other. And I'm telling you, I am having a firm belief. I believe firmly, if you help anyone, 
God will help you in numerous ways. Remember that. There is someone there who is all, always, always having an eye on you. If you do good, that will somehow return back to you. Somehow return back to you. Don't keep in your mind any negativities. There are so many people having negativities against me also. But always you are seeing me being positive. Let them tell anything. Let us do whatever work I am doing. You know? So in that way, you also in your life, just keep on going ahead positively. Because we are not going to speak in front of others. Let our work speak against us. Understanding my point here? So help others. Always try to help others. All your friends and all colleagues. And God is going to help you in numerous ways, I am telling you. N number of ways. Wo kahi na kahi se aapko help kare. Understanding my point here, sir? So with this thing, I am going to, you know, sign off here, guys. Thank you all. It was very nice interacting with you people for this two hours of biochemistry class here. Hope, hope this effort of mine will help you all in your exam. Okay, now. So thank you all guys. This is Dr. Azam signing off here.